Hello, people, and thank you for uh, listening to us once again. Um, and thank you for listening to uh, us embark on this journey that we have been embarking in for a while now. Amalia, how you doing? Que bueno, I want to uh, thank you for uh, coming over here and having a conversation with us. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you for inviting me. Este, so you, your your plática sound cool, right? Hey, well, I just want people to know different types of shit out there. You know, um, we interviewed uh, JJ Arms, and he confessed that uh, there is an underground city under El Paso, and he said he's been there. Oh shit, in Chad Landis. Neta, Aslan, bro. Right, it's under. I was like, what the fuck is under this fucking city, dude? Yeah, I think about that all the time too. Dude, and all the time. And then, and then the access point was probably through UTEP, the, the biggest. <laughs> sabe, <laughs> dude. Dude. Have you heard about all these other tunnels, like under El Paso High okay. and the Turtle House? Yeah, okay. Like, what the fuck's up with these tunnels, dude? They say there's like Chinese people that that that's how they were smuggling the Chinese people during like World War Two was it or World War One? I? I don't know one of those world wars, but I don't know, man. No one knows who sealed those off either. They're like sealed off. The narcos, right? Like the narcos sealed them off. But you think they're like did, este no este sí. Estas madres hasta chimeneas tienen, wey. Like they have chimneys. What the fuck is that? Under, but it's probably really cold, dude. It's probably really cold, so they got to keep them <laughs> warm in the winter week. It's fucking yeah. nuts, dude. There's like, there's a lot of mystery in this town, dude. Oh yeah. And and it's it's crazy. Like a lot of people say like Area Fifty One and shit. And if they wanted to keep it secret, why why is it so everyone knows about it, right? Like, I'm sure the shit is here, man. Because El Paso, where the fuck out of, far from everything, we're in the middle of the desert, it's hot as shit, puro Mexicano, and Mexicano doesn't give a fuck about fucking aliens that much in underground cities, you know? Wouldn't it be like a perfect place to fucking have some crazy shit under here? Pues, I mean, yeah, pues it's, I think, I think that Mexicanos do care, it's just that we're socially socially economically placed in a place where we just um oh as i i guess the word would be socioeconomically mm-hmm. is they placed on the on the on that on that ladder is they kind of on the bottom you know so we got to worry about our next paycheck and right surviving so as much as it's interesting to us like it's not something we can really spend six months off work and fucking True. Travel and check it out, and no worries, my bank account's got my back. Is it you know, like, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true, dude. I mean, we do have to work hard, especially in El Paso, one of the poorest cities in Texas and the nation. I think, dude. It's only poor because people keep it that way. Certain people. I yeah. mean, you don't think it's also I don't want to name of, names, but you know. Yeah, you don't think it's also lack of education. That we don't, or, or, or don't like we leave like too. No, I think I think what it is is a lack of opportunity and mm-hmm. it's an exploitation of of resources and and positions. I mean, it's like uh, hay varios grupos de élite que viven aquí and they mm-hmm. take advantage of their situation and they and there's a lot of nepotism and there's a lot of uh, uh, este cómo se llama uh, more than este not mordidas, este, conciertos también, ¿verdad? Pero corruption, well, corruption bro. There's a lot of corruption. Oh, yeah. And then it's so easy to just sweep shit under, under the rug of Juarez or the rug mm. of El Paso. You know, they're on both sides. Están tirando el pinche. Ay, que fueron ellos y que fueron estos y que. It's always really easy to just sweep it under the rug here because we are so underrepresented by our central powers of each of each country. Yeah. You know, like it's mm. muy fácil. What well, did you hear that that uh the mayor of I think Chihuahua Duarte or some shit got locked up already? Oh no. Yeah, dude. Here in the United States they locked his ass up. What did he do? Jacked a whole bunch of money and I some other su carnal también. He was a uh mayor of some other 
fucking state in town Mexico. I don't know which one, but those Duarte's, dude, they're fucking mad corrupted, dude. But yeah. So Amalia, let us know what's happening with you right now. You were talking to me earlier before we started about all these badass projects that you have done and uh we want to go ahead and hear about them uh, well I, like first of all how did you get into music dude like not a lot of people especially like in mexicanos and stuff they don't dream of being like a famous singer and shit how, how did you get that idea into your head how did it start becoming a reality Híjola, dude. <laughs> bueno kind of long story um hey. well first i started music i was a uh, i just always loved music always right. since i was a kid and then uh then 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 i remember sixth grade the middle school band showed up to la union elementary yeah and then there's this little middle school band and i remember seeing these like sheets with like like you know symbols on them and i was like oh that's a badass language Oh, shit. I would like to learn that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, uh, and I saw the clarinets and the trumpets and I didn't know their names of all the instruments, but I knew some of them. And then, uh, all my life, like all my childhood, I guess, este, I had been told that I could sing and, right. uh, and then, uh, but I didn't really know what that meant. I thought that meant like, Oh, my parents just love me. And they tell me that <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. sing like, you know, <laughs> you know, este, ay, mi hija está bien bonita, pinche mocote, no hay, you know, like, <laughs> hey. you know, but you know, that's, it's, it's the, the eyes of loving parents, you know, exactly, so, yeah. este, so when I hit middle school, I started, uh, ya, ya para ese entonces, like around, like sixth grade, I kind of knew, seventh grade, like I knew what decent sound was, mm -hmm. my mom was a singer when she was a kid, mm -hmm. so, um, when she was younger, her and her sisters had a trio in Juarez, and the story is like they almost went on tour with Amalia Mendoza La Tariacuri. Oh shit! But, for real? Yeah, but my grandparent, my 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 grandpa was like, nah, bro, like, ustedes no son changuitos marioneteros, <laughs> what he said. So they didn't go, and uh, you know, mm. este, they lived a normal life, I guess, a normal fronteriza life, I guess. Right. Yes, este, so. Uh, so my mom always told me she didn't she wasn't able to tell me what to do because she wasn't formally educated in music mm, okay. but she did know she always knew how to tell me what not to do mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we listened to like don francisco's like you know the chacal on saturdays oh then, the trompeta yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tru, tru, tru. <laughs> so people would sing and then she would know like right away she's like, i know i said no Tiene voz de pinacate, decía. Oh, shit. She would say that, and then I was like, Orale, I didn't know that pinacates had a voice. Right. You know? <laughs> Pero, I wonder what they sound like. Yeah, so, um, so I kind of knew, like, I knew what decent, what a, what a good voice was mm -hmm. based on what not to do. Right. So when I joined band, I had, which I had to fight for, like, I told, I asked, I told my dad that I wanted to be in band, and he's like, nah, tú. What tú kind of was, instrument did you play? I played clarinet. Clarinet? Okay. Yeah. My dad didn't want me to be in band because I was always a very hyperactive kid. Mm -hmm. So, un día me gustaba una cosa y otro día, mm. like, eh. So, he's like, nah, you're, I'm just going to rent you a clarinet and or a, an instrument and you're not going to, you're not going to want to do it in two months. Right. Okay, you know what, dude? This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Oh, shit. And dude. so, little 12 year old, like, manifesting shit. So like, um, so he was like, hey, a ver si cierto pues. So, so we did tryouts in, in middle school. I wanted to play tuba. <laughs> oh, damn, But dude. I was little, I was little, little. So Imagine the teacher's like, I don't know. <laughs> this should be funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to play tuba, uh, if not drums or French mm, horn. Right. But they were like, pues it's trumpet or clarinet. But oh, the, band, the band director was more like inclined towards clarinet because mm -hmm. he made clarinet players. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right. So I picked the clarinet and yeah, rasé, dude. Because dude, you, you picked it up quick? Real quick, yeah. Oh, I was shit. like obsessed. I was obsessed because my whole life, like as a kid, uh, I was like a Mexican American kid that didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. So the teachers in my in my school were were pretty racist. Oh shit. Yeah, and they would they would like 
they were really mean when they taught me. Mm. Y pues yo era como, I just didn't want to hear it. So I didn't pay attention to them ever. Right. I was like, nah, tú no me hablas bien, no te voy a poner atención. <laughs> yeah. so, so they were like, ah, no quiere aprender o no va a aprender. So we take her out of math and science and put her into more English. Shit. So I was in English all fucking day. And I was like, I want to fucking learn this pinche language, chingados. Mm -hmm. Like, not like that. <laughs> right. So, like, they, um, I started falling behind in math and science. And then I wasn't learning English. So they're like, esta chavalita no aprende. Let's put her in special education. Oh, shit, dude. So they put me in special ed and they diagnosed me with ADHD. And in my whole life, like I was told, you can't learn. Like you cannot learn. You're 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 dumb. Yeah, back in the day, people were real mean. Damn, este, no aprendes. You're special ed. You're dumb. Este, which is another reason why I don't use that word. Yeah. Este, which one? Dumb. A, I don't dumb. use the word oh, okay. dumb, or I I really refrain from using stupid. I never say the R word. Like it's just mm -hmm. I think like that's a it's a way to keep people down. Yeah. Because everybody learns. Right. So, so but when what I are got people that don't want to learn? Well, people that don't want to learn is because they don't want to learn. But, but that's their that choice. Make you, yeah, but that's not dumb. That's just that's emotional. That's emotional baggage that they have to deal with. Like I didn't want to learn, but I was yeah. a kid. Like, does that make me dumb? No, that just means that I was going against everybody else. It was like you have to learn and you have to learn like mm -hmm. this, and you're a little shit. <laughs> so I was like, fuck you. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to learn. Fuck you. Yeah. And then I later learned, like, pues con mucha trauma, like, I had to go back and learn to learn. Right. But my way. Yeah. Sometimes I think people don't want to learn because they're not learning. They're not learning the way that that inspires them. Mm -hmm. There's always a way. I think everybody likes to learn. It's just they haven't found their own way to learn. Don't you think sometimes we don't know what? that it is that we need to learn too. Like, we don't know what is it that we don't know. So we don't right. know that we have to learn it. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah or, or we don't find the importance in it because mm -hmm. we just don't, we haven't, maybe we haven't needed it yet. Or if we do need, es que hay, hay, there's so many dynamics to learning and to self-esteem and, and to growth. Yeah. So, bueno, going back to the subject, este... Music was a way for me to to say, I can learn, motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. This is a language I want to learn. Right. And so, and we're all starting at the same time. Like, no, porque cuando yo entré a la escuela, pues ya había niños de third, fourth generation Mexican Americans mm -hmm. and, and, and Anglos that spoke English their whole life. Right, right. So they were already ahead of the game. Pero in mm -hmm. music, we were all... We were all like parejitos, People. dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Orale, aquí sí empieza la carrera, cabrones." Hell yeah. Dude. So like, you know, the ahí sí le metí, le metí machine. Like, I was obsessed. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's fucking. How long did it take you to to learn how to read the music? The sheets. De volada, I would say like, um, bueno, así bien, bien, like about a year. Like, I mean, you learn like decently to learn like the basics it takes mm -hmm. about two weeks man two three weeks yeah to learn like quarter notes and and uh half notes and 16s it takes yeah. well, no, it takes about it takes about like like six months to learn like 16s and all that mm -hmm. yeah the 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 more um like uh how much did you say subdivided Mm -hmm. rhythms and stuff like that and then it takes an entire lifetime dude honestly like it doesn't take yeah. it takes forever to, to your whole life and then ilo también la música si no la practicas dude you start losing it right away yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah dude i noticed like i started trying to learn to play the keyboards yeah and i was getting really good i learned how to play the titanic song y todo. and fucking i got blind dude and now i try to go back and It's all gone, dude. It's fucked up. Yeah, but anyways. So, uh... <sighs> yeah, oh, so, bueno, I think we were at the, the allí, de la middle school. I went mm -hmm. to high school. I did band, marching band. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got into mariachi because somebody told the teacher that oh, I sang. Mm -hmm. And so they put me in mariachi without my consent. <laughs> It's oh, like, shit. yeah, one day I just showed up to English class and they're like, hey... This is no longer your class. Report But, to this class. So I'm like, what are they okay? 
So I go to the band room, like, what's going on? They're like, oh, but you're in mariachi now, dude. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit, okay. Shit, okay. That's fucking cool, though. It was cool, yeah, it was cool. And then um, at the time, I didn't know how to sing mariachi. I didn't consider myself a singer. Like, I knew, I thought I was, like, I could sing, but I didn't see myself as a singer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was a clarinet player. Mm -hmm. So, este, um, I would sing... I would sing mariachi, but I didn't really sing the style yet. Like, I sang more like like country style mm, mariachi. Okay, okay. Y todo yeah. mundo me decía, es que tienes que soltar la voz, dude. You gotta, like, soltar la voz. And I was like, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh -huh. So I remember, like, I was like, maybe, what if one day I sing this song, like, Lucha Villa, like, because I always grew up listening to oh, Lucha Villa. Yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. and, like, all those, all those old icons. And so one day I was like hyper. I showed up. I was like, I'm gonna sing this song like if I was, este, Lucha Villa. And I sang it, and everybody was like, Where the fuck have you been, bro? Oh, like shit, that's what I meant by soltar la voz. Right. So right. I, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So then that's where I understood genres, mm -hmm. like, okay. and the importance of, of, really getting into, the the character of the genre, the spirit, the the sentiment, the feeling, the the persona of the genre. Mm -hmm. And so, de ahí, pues ya me gradué. I went to este, New Mexico State University. Oh, shit. Decided to, to do music. Mm -hmm. And I did clarinet for like two years, which was a disaster. Este, How so? What it do you was mean? Because... Bueno, I grew up with this self-esteem issue, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I grew up, like, thinking that I can't really learn. Right. And um, so nobody in my family had ever had any, uh, like, um, sc like, school after middle school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My mom still hadn't had her GED. O sea, my dad got out of school when he was in sixth grade. Like, right. Juaritos... Yeah. 1943 style, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so, um, so, uh, university was really difficult for me. I didn't understand mm -hmm. um, time management. I didn't mm -hmm. understand the amount of time that uh, that uh, that like classes needed. And then mm -hmm. I and then I also had like a terrible lack of confidence, and and it was just really bad. Entonces, este, I ended up getting out after two years, and mm. uh, and I joined a drum corps. Uh, drum corps? Yeah. It was I like drum and bugle corps. Oh, shit. Yeah. And that really changed my life. Mm -hmm. it was, it's like a, it's kind of like a semi-professional marching band. And mm -hmm. I call it semi, it's an actual, it's like, it performs at a professional level. Pero you don't get paid, so you're not professional. It's like... You and know, where do they perform it? All over the U.S. For what type of events? It's or? like a, it's a nonprofit organization, and it's like marching band kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like hardcore marching band, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you train for an eleven-minute show, but like the entire summer, every single day, you get two days off in the entire summer to oh, wash shit. your clothes. No mass. Damn. Yeah, and and Straight. like. You go in, you work from like 8 in the morning to like 6 p.m., sometimes 12 a.m. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Todos los días. And, and like it, that is the, the, the highest and most like the hardest working ensemble I have ever been sure. part of. And I toured, I was like 21. I was 19, 20, 21, mm -hmm. touring on a bus, sleeping on gym floors, sure. performing in, in like... In Vesco Field, performing at the Murfreesboro, performing like at oh, the wow, RCA dude. Dome, like oh, shit. yeah, yeah. So uh, we placed. Uh, I think uh, the first year we placed. Uh, s I want to say it was like we barely made it. Like we got like tenth place. Oh shit! And you, you there's only twelve. And mm -hmm. then the second year we made sixth. Oh, so way yeah, better. yeah, dude, it was hard work mm -hmm. and so i learned that that um i can be part of of like something more like i felt that i could do more mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that i can succeed 
Right. That all it takes is consistency. It takes good work ethic. Um, it takes um, it takes a lot of of just wanting something. Yeah, the yeah. desire. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I aprendí, pues aprendí como los key elements to to uh, completing something successfully. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, quote unquote successfully, right? Because mm -hmm. I think success is defined by everybody individually. Yeah, entonces, I agree. So from there, este. I, I aged out. I aged out at 21. Mm -hmm. uh, this was in Denver, Colorado. Oh, and then uh, it was called the Denver Blue Knights. Denver Blue Knights Drum and Bugle Corps. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to El Paso. Damn, how was that? That was... Transition. Well, I moved to Las Cruces. And mm -hmm. like I had been living in Cruces for like two years prior. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. For New Mexico State. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't fitting in, man. Like I... I had, I just always, and I don't mean to diss, like, I love New Mexico, dude, I'm New Mexican. But yeah. I just felt like in Las Cruces, like, there was a lot of anti-Mexicano sentiment. Oh, shit, Yeah, really? yeah, it was, like, real subtle, mm, like, comentarios, you know? Like, about UTEP and the people that UTEP and Las Fresas y against. It was just always something. Hmm. You know, me gustó, and I was like, you know... You guys are cool and all, but uh, I don't like playing this little elitist game. Right. So I moved to El Paso and everybody was like, that's the biggest mistake. Like, you're going down. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you're you're like, you're like you're going down the, the ladder. Like, it, I was right. like, what the fuck does that mean? So then I moved to, to El Paso and it was interesting because mm -hmm. uh, the first person... I, I like the first person I became friends with. I went to their house and they were like, "No, yeah. I ended up like opening their fridge, no." And the first thing I see is like chile, tomate, cebolla, and cilantro, and I was like, "This is home, Sansa. motherfuckers!" <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, yeah, I started. I started a band in El Paso called Fabula. Yeah. With a group of dudes, and we played um, like gypsy jazz, bossa nova, um. We played a, a, like a trio, trio, like that, the old trios. Right. And what year was this? What this was like, it had to be like 2006. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, de hecho, todavía no me hacía age out. It was like my last year. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was still going back and forth to Colorado. Right. And then, um, and then I was in that band for like maybe three or four years, I want to say. Mm-hmm. We did we did really well, man. Like we did really well for the for the the age, right. like the lack of conocimiento, mm -hmm. y, y así. And then then we broke up, and then why did you break up? Can you tell us? Um, yeah, we broke up because uh, a ver, qué fue? I think that um, the one of the integrantes was. Yeah, I think he was just going through a lot of changes, mm, and okay, he just okay. he just like wasn't really just, feeling it. Mm -hmm. So he kind of called it off, and I was like, "All right, dude, like it happens." Yeah, like mm -hmm. it, it takes it takes a a lot of people to 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 be in a group, you know, and, yeah. and a lot of like uh, like minded mm -hmm. and and, uh, and um, a collective yeah uh, collective mind conscience yeah, yeah. Un coll un collective goal. And we just didn't mm -hmm. have the same collective goal anymore. Okay, yeah. I started having different aspirations in life. Yeah, and so then the allí is the I joined a band in Juarez that mm -hmm. was called La Caravana, right? And that was a Balkan Gypsy Klezmer Cumbia group. Oh, that shit. was bomb. Sounds fun. Yeah, dude. it was fun. But they they had already been together for a while. Those guys would win like Best of the Border oh, stuff. Shit. Yeah, they were bomb. They were really good. Yes, they, they had a girl who sang, her name was Alinka. And mm -hmm. then they kind of had a falling out. And then I got in. And then right when I got in, este, I got in like, it had to have been 2006. Mm -hmm. Y ahí ya, pues ya había empezado la, la violencia en Juárez. Oh, uh, yeah, the femicides. And, yeah, ya había, no, no, the femicides ya habían. What happened before or what? The femicides have been going on for a long, for a while. Yes, yeah, since the '90s, yeah. Oh like, shit, like for real? Like, yeah, too. Oh damn! No, I, I came to El Paso no one, so I don't know. Ah, okay. No, when in 2006, it, it was the 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 it's the drug war. Mm, it was really, really cabron. Yeah, like 
llegaba and like the military had mili they had mil it had been Juarez was militarized like it on military sicarios like it was like si veías trocas sin placas like cuidado dude Damn, and then dude. I remember like at that time I used to smoke pot like a lot of pot mm -hmm. and so I remember este I would take my little frajitos, you know, yeah. and I was I would climb the trees and smoke on the trees, but que no me vieran oh, los shit, how that is. That is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're primates. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and then, um, pero se empezó a poner cabrón, güey. Sure. So one of the integrantes decided that he was gonna get, um, he wanted to get a master's. Mm -hmm. uh, or I don't remember if he wanted to get a master's or a degree in jazz and he was a saxophone player mm -hmm. so he wanted to go to uh, one of the best music conservatories in Mexico and that's in Jalapa oh, like, el conservatorio de Jalapa yeah and mm -hmm. uh, the música en Jalapa and so he took off y pues el grupo se desintegró mm -hmm. which they later became Sonido Cachimbo and they had a different singer and then I eventually got into that band too oh, este, también también uh, that one by the time I got in like la violencia en Juárez ya es, se estaba like calming down mm -hmm. uh, but it was still present it was still pretty pretty rough like some of the some of the barrios were like fuck dude like trying we were trying to reclaim them back like it was sí, estaba cabrón yeah Damn, este, so it was cool like it was really cool so I really believe in solidarity and I believe that uh Juárez en el Paso, sí son hermanas, and I still have family there, and, and I think mm -hmm. that as long as I am able to cross, I'm going to, and I'm going to build community on both sides. So... so you, but you're not, like, scared for your life yeah. when you're over Fuck there, yeah. dude? Fuck yeah, dude, pero that's not... Pero I'm not... I don't like... Like, it's like... I mean, dude, like... What about the people that live there all day and they don't have a choice? Like that's true. So dude. like they live scared también, pero qué le van a hacer, güey? They're yeah. gonna they're not gonna not walk the streets. So who the fuck am I, in my opinion? Who right. the fuck am I to be like, hey, you know, boy? Like nah, wey. Like somos hermanos para mí. Right. Somos to me, Juárez en el Paso is like looking into a mirror. Yeah, it was like the same. un lado, y luego, if you look at it, when I raise my right hand in the mirror, look, it's my mm -hmm. left hand, you know. So, mm -hmm. so like, um, I think uh, I, I, as long as as long as the bridge is here, I'm gonna keep crossing, and once the bridge is gone, I'm gonna keep going. Like it's sure. so, like aquí estoy yo para la, pa los chingazos, you know. Yeah. So. Oh, no, go ahead. no, no. Entonces, so, so yeah, I've always been very involved on both sides, mm -hmm, musically mm -hmm. and community wise. And, um, it's crazy, man. Yeah. So, Are we scared to do stuff like that in Juarez, uh, like music stuff? Or, nah, dude, like, and to have a revolutionary type of mind, too? Yeah. Pues, I mean, kind of scary. Pues, yeah. sí, it's like, I'm not gonna, I don't know, dude, like, está más cabrón no hacer nada. That's true. And then, and then in the end, like, these are like my brothers and my sisters and my primos and my tios and my abuelitas, you know? Yeah. And like, uh, if I can, if I can, if I can help throw rocks at the system, then I will. <laughs> yes, they, so yeah. Okay. So I was in that band. So, and then I joined Frontera Bugalú. Oh, Simon, that's when I yeah. found out about you when you were in Bugalú. Yeah. And, uh. And that was, uh, I lived at this house called, La, it was in La Mundi, but le decían La Nave Espacial because it was <laughs> a fucking crazy house. Yeah, we just partying there? Or it what? was a what lot of partying and oh, a okay. lot of like, just, it was kind of crazy. Like people would, I would, I would wake up and I'd go to the kitchen or the bathroom and the mm -hmm. living room was right in front of my room and like there was always someone new on the couch oh I shit was like, hey. yeah. or like you'd walk in and someone that you had no idea who the fuck they were were going through the fridge and you're just like what the Orale. <laughs> and that didn't, didn't trip you out and scare you like what nah. the fuck it's having strangers here you don't even know nah but i was really young man you know what part they like so we were all like the the guy who kind of ran the house, like, he would leave that internet open so anybody could take it if they wanted. Like, mm, it was just about, mm. like, sharing, you know? Right, right. Yes, the pinche casa era un desmadre, güey. Nadie limpiaba. Oh, un pinche. Damn. We would throw parties, like every, so, like, every so often. And there would be, like, 
parties donde llegaban un chingo de bands y tocaban. Oh, damn, yeah, dude. Yeah, so, like, everybody would just... It was cool, man. That's tight. So, Sounds fun. Yeah, so the, the guy, like... Uh, was friends with Kiko, mm -hmm. who was uh, one of the integrantes from Fuga. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, I guess, like, Fuga had broken up, um, and uh, Kiko wanted to start another band. So he came and talked to Ramon, and, th and they were like, yeah, let's start it. We'll rehearse here. Mm -hmm. So the rehearsals were at my house. Y pues yo en ese entonces, pues yo andaba bien loquilla. Like, I was like... Smoking a lot of pot, drinking a lot, mm -hmm. this madre. So I up. never missed rehearsals because I was always home, you know, like, it's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit, I didn't even know there was rehearsal today. <laughs> Just yeah, bring the little clarinet. This, yeah. This See, and so it was that and I was going to school um, mm -hmm. at EPCC. And this so you, you left NMSU and then you started yeah. EPCC. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, started EPCC and that really helped me out. Mm -hmm. Este... So I was at the Center for Students with Disabilities because mm -hmm. uh, I was diagnosed with ADHD at a young age. It was like my whole life I was told I couldn't learn. So I had a lot of like, like complejos with my learning mm -hmm. abilities, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I, I ultimately like now that I'm older, I know I know I can learn right. and I know that I'm smart. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's like. When you when you're told so many times in your fundamental years that you can't learn, because you swallow that pill, you know. But who was telling you this, dude? Teachers. No man, as you see. Kids, wait. My parents. Your parents. My parents. See, that's the dude. thing. That's the worst when yeah. your parents. Yeah. See dude. you like that. You know? so, like I mean, back in the day, it was like my parents were immigrants, man. They didn't mm -hmm. go to school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like back in the day, it was like teachers were fucking gods. Yeah. It was like, llegabas y si la teacher decía, oh, your kid's not paying attention. Pues it was like, oh, you're not paying attention. En vez de right. como hoy en día que si un teacher dice, oh, pues your kid's not paying attention. Well, what are you doing that's keeping right. them from, you yeah. know, like, so. Um, Back then you didn't question authority yeah. or nothing. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not blaming the teachers tam tampoco. I think it's it's a little bit of both. Pero antes, it was like, lo que decía la maestra rifaba, dude. It was like, mm -hmm. y luego lo más cabrón, güey, estaba like, I remember this shit. I was remembering this shit last week, dude. Like, I was like, damn. My parents didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. So when we went to parent-teacher conferences, the <laughs> yeah. teachers would fucking tell me to tell my parents that I was being bad in school. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was like, That's crazy. tell your mom that you have bad grades. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm a... Dice la maestra que no tengo buenas calificaciones. Y ahí está la jeta de mi jefa así como que... Cabrona, te va a oh, mal, you know, shit. and I'm like, fuck, yeah. and then the teacher, so the teachers, it's like I'm watching my own sentence, wait, like, that <laughs> shit fucks with your brain, that Simon, is like yeah. psychological warfare shit, dude, Simon, See, yeah. Lo les, yeah. Oh, yeah. like, you know, there was only one teacher, dude, that, like, saw, like, some potential in me, mm -hmm. and it was in sixth grade, and I remember she, um, she was like, you know what, you're a creative storyteller, we're going right. to make you a creative storyteller. So she got me this story about about being a kid who who who, who needed glasses. Mm -hmm. And and it was like uh, this little kid couldn't see and she couldn't learn and she had a hard time. So then one day they tell her she needs glasses, so she they give her the glasses and she feels like she feels isolated. She's like, fuck, dude, I have glasses. I'm the only person in the world with glasses. I feel mm -hmm. self-conscious. Yes, see? Y luego she can finally see and she realizes like, oh, shit, dude, there's kids with braces. There's kids with like, yeah. like uh, crutches. There's kids with like, there's all kinds of kids that have all kinds of different uniquenesses. Right. And now that I can see, like, mm -hmm. and it's so crazy because I feel like to this day, that story keeps teaching me right. and that experience. And so she had me learn it, memorize it, and then perform it in front of the class. And oh, then shit. she had the class and herself critique me. Mm -hmm. And then she prepared me to go to a literary festival uh, for the district. And I fucking won first place, man. I win. Yeah, and it was Watch like, it. yeah, it was the first time that I ever like felt like, oh shit, I could kind of do something Some here. type of accomplishment. Yeah. Or yeah. So, um, so I, like, I think like, like 
the rest of my experiences were pretty fucking jacked, bro. Like, I had, like, I remember I had this teacher. I had to go to summer school once, and I had this teacher. She just didn't like me, man. I was in fourth grade. Dude, I'm bitch in the other eight years old, dude. Right. And she, yeah. like, she got mad at me because I wasn't paying attention to her. And in front of todos los niños, right before lunch, she goes, you need to get your act together oh, or shit. else you're going to have to go to summer school again. Oh, and then all damn. the kids are like, ooh, y all see the que fuck, dude. Like, de por si, ya todos me decían que I was dumb, that I couldn't right. learn. Like, kids are mean, man. They would mm -hmm. tease me a lot. And pues este, but that shit, like, that shit really affected my, my growth, you know? That's fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. So, yeah, being in the Center for Students with Disabilities really helped me because um, they, they, they started giving me wings like the counselor and the and the secretary mm -hmm. lady were like really amazing very supportive and they were like hey man have you ever thought of like you know note taking i was like nah bro like i can't take notes i have adhd i can't mm -hmm. and she's like no no but you can learn like we can teach you mm -hmm. i'm like yeah but if i make a mistake there's people with other disabilities and they're depending on these notes and i'm jacking up their notes it's just like no 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 you have to accept and then from there you grow y ahí crecemos todos, no hay pedo. Right. Ok, ok. So, ya yeah, ahí aprendí. Luego, después, I ascended to tutor. And then I was the top paid tutor. And then it was like, oh, yeah, dude. And so. Tutor for what? What did you tutor? I was tutoring all kinds of disabled students in all, all temas. Mm, okay. Except for math, because so I'm still uh, with the math. Yeah, yeah. I gotta, that's another. One day I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna work with math, but pero, pero este, until then, <laughs> until then, I'll tutor everything else. Right. So the cool thing was that you were not allowed to know what, what the disability of the person was. Mm -hmm. You just had to learn that there's different ways of stimulating people's learning habits, mm -hmm. um, and that you had to figure it out. Oh, sure. So it was like, okay, these are some things that you could do. So I learned to improvise. And to read people like it was like oh, oh shit, okay so it's like oh you you learn mm -hmm. you learn this the this way mm -hmm. this is how i realize you learn this way mm -hmm. a lot of times we realize that people learn the way that they speak so like what do you mean well yeah i think you i think i heard you say i see mm -hmm. so you probably a lot more visual than you are auditory Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I'm like more auditory. So oh, I say like, okay. oh, yeah, I hear you, Simon. I feel you. So I feel you means that I'm a tactic learner. So right. I learn better by doing things. Right. So if you just hear people's uh, way of expressing themselves, you learn right away just just by that, and <laughs> then you start paying attention to how they act around what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then you start approaching like, okay, how much do you know about this, or how much do you know about that? And then you start creating ways to 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 stimulate those senses in them so that they remember mm. things and then they learn to learn themselves. That's crazy. Yeah. That and makes then sense. the most important thing is is that a lot of times I think learning is like Tetris. So mm -hmm. we have these blocks and they gotta fit a certain way so that things click and it mm -hmm. becomes like a web that lights up, right? Right. And entonces sometimes along the way there's a disruption in the learning process mm -hmm. and but because everybody's always in chinga y que necesito y que acá y que in the system dude it's like always para adelante always para adelante i don't yeah. have time for you mm -hmm. right now because i have kids and i have esto and i have that and there's and the poor teachers i están con pinches 30 kids y, and they've got to handle this one's attitude and these other fuckers that are trying to learn and they can't right and so mm -hmm. there's that one breach in your learning and they can't tend to it. So you learn on top of that breach. And there's a right. problem. And those ya se this hace discompobulate muchas cosas. Mm -hmm. And there becomes like that that becomes like an inconsistency in the solid frame of your education. So oh, sure. it affects your it affects like your confidence because anytime you touch that subject, you're gonna be like, uh and then anything that's built on top of that is gonna be frail too. Right. So sometimes you got these kids that are like, you know, they're learning algebra, but they didn't learn something within within a like a little tiny frame of language, like un pedacito de language. Mm -hmm. And every time they hear this word, they're thinking something different. Mm -hmm. And so when they express to you something, it doesn't make sense. So how can you learn 
this other subject when you're still right here with this problem. Right. So sometimes you got to be like, I know you need to finish this and you need to get an A or a B or a passing grade, but you got to work on this first before we get to that, bro. And sure. that, and that is really important. And, the, and the, mm-hmm. unfortunately, we live in a system where there is no time. Like, si no lo aprendiste, te chingaste, and that's what constitutes as a quote-unquote dumb person. And that yeah. sucks, dude, because there's so many people out there broken as fuck because somebody told them that they're dumb and that they can't learn mm-hmm. because there was a mistranslation or a miscommunication or just something that they didn't grasp solidly. Yeah. And so that's why... I have a problem with those words. Entonces, so anyways, so para mí, güey, allí descubrí todo eso. And that gave me a lot of like, that was like gold in my life. Mm-hmm. Este, or water, más bien, because like we can't survive on gold, but we can survive on water. Este, oh, cool. So that was the water of my life, one of them. Y entonces, so then I went to UTEP and... what because of the central, because I was like, I don't want to go to UTEP, dude. Like I can't mm-hmm. learn. Y entonces I went to UTEP and it was like I had um, I had the choice of get of doing like a ¿cómo se llama? una multidisciplinary studies. Mm, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. And then um, esa madre pues you know like some people don't see it like in a like in a like it's like oh you got multidisciplinary studies. It's just like whatever. Yeah, it's, like yeah. Just mix it everything everything you ever took. So hey, I had a lot cool, of music dude. classes and a lot of electives. <laughs> but see, that's how you learn, right? Yeah, Different fuck yeah. Shit. Yeah. Te, te digo, es el sistema que está bien, está bien jacked. Like, it's only it's one-sided. You have to get educated so you can work, right. not so you could get smart. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Este, they, they breed employers. Employees. Exactly, yeah. dude. That's the, Since we're kids. Yeah. That's what the whole fucking school's fucking designed to do to get you... To sit down and shut up and follow directions. See, sí, wey, and y como no se fit in, pues that's what constitutes you as dumb. Damn. You know? And that's why I feel like I keep going to that, but I just think like it's so problematic to say that word. Like it's, it just doesn't belong in this, in this, in, in this life experience for me, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, um, anyway, so de allí este, me metí a, a UTEP and. To make li- to make it short, like I decided to take on history. Okay. And I was like, "Fuck it, let's do history." I mm. really love these stories. I love this class I took. Este, I took a class with Dr. Martin, la 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 lady, and uh, it was called uh, Spanish Borderlands, and that was the first time I knew about our history here, dude. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. was like, because my whole life I'd heard like. You know, U.S. history, Los Beaches, 13 colonies. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you don't George belong Washington there. Like, you never, you're ne- you never mentioned in anything. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, like, this was the first time I learned about our history and what we, like, you know, what these lands went through. And I was like, oh, shit, I want to learn about that. So yeah. I did history. Uh, mm-hmm. I started uh, majoring in history with a minor in commercial in commercial music, and I focused on clarinet. Mm-hmm. Este... Um, so then I joined like the Arabic music ensemble, the symphonic band. Este, I was in the Arabic music ensemble for like four years. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really cool. Este, I got to sing. Eventually, it became like a world music ensemble, but mostly focused on Arabic. Yes, and then uh, and then I ran out of funds for school. Oh, so your financial aid fund? Yeah, dude. Like, pues es que it, it was a long ride before I realized that I could learn, you know? Right, yeah. So I had to fuck up a lot. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, pues ya, ya no, ya no puedo ir a la escuela unless I, like, worked and did, you know. Paid a few salaries. Yeah, shit. but I owed a lot of shit. And then at the time, like, my family was going through some stuff. So, mm-hmm. como que ya había tenido muchas cosas building up my whole life. And, and I just hadn't dealt with it. Like emotional, yeah, dude, okay, yeah. Okay, and okay. so I like I was like, okay, this is a time for me to get out of school and really start dealing with this shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like, oh man, I, I got like a little taste of a little bit of existential crisis way, and <laughs> fuck, oh because I had stopped smoking pot and I had stopped drinking. So. Why did you stop? 
Because it was affecting my my learning abilities. Like I couldn't remember a lot of mm. stuff, like dates and. La otra cosa, the main reason was it was affecting my voice. Mm, like okay. I, I, at one point, I lost control this one time, and I was like, "Ay, wey, like, <laughs> qué pasó aquí?" What do you mean you lost control? Like, I... como que se me hizo como un gallo bien culero. Oh shit! And I couldn't like reach it. And I couldn't sing around it. I couldn't, like, I just, it was like, it was really bizarre. That's right. never happened. Well, the only time that ever happens to me is, like, when I have an allergic reaction to the to the fog machines. Because mm. I get allergic reactions to that. So, me hace como un film in my throat. And I cannot, I lose my voice, dude. Like, oh, I shit. lose it. Like, it's gone. Damn, and then it feels como heavy le haces when you're performing? I tell them no fog machine. Oh, so damn. I'm like, so all these vatos are like, I pinche diva, you know? I'm like, no, dude, like straight up, <laughs> like if you want me to fucking sing, dude, it's like I cannot Shit. physically. That's what causes the drama in the stage, dude. The smoke. <laughs> mm. Nah, man. A good performer causes the drama. True, that's man. true though. People are out there to hear the music of the performer. Well, yeah, and they're out there to experience like, to experience a ride, an emotional ride. And if the if the performer knows how to communicate the ride, then the right. then the audience goes on the ride with or without fog machine, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> fuck yeah. Let me, let me ask you something. Do you remember your first time that you got on like on a real stage and were nervous as shit, or you weren't nervous? Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. How does all, that feel? All the time. Este, I have this thing where, yeah, like I'm a shaker, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, like I shake, my voice shakes, my hands shake. And and uh, there's a thing that I always say to myself and then mm -hmm. I feel better. Uh, it's swim or sink. Swim or sink. And it's like, you've always swam, dude. Mm -hmm. And I always remember this one time that I used to longboard. Mm -hmm. And I went down this pinchy hill, según yo muy chingona, dude. Like, oh. and I took it straight. I didn't, I didn't even carve it, <laughs> and it wasn't sunset. Thought, thought crazy. And I remember uh, there came a point where it was like, I have two seconds to jump off. Up oh, the two seconds just passed, and I was like, fuck, dude, you gotta stay on this uh. shit. So I stayed on the board, and like, you know, there comes a point where the board wants to start wiggling, and then that's when you're like, fuck, I need to jump. But if sometimes if you pass the wiggle and you just like okay, dude, just ya estás aquí, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you're able to connect with a part of your brain that thinks. Like it's like okay, dude, drop this shit. It's not gonna help. What's your next move? Mm -hmm. Just stay on as long as possible and find the best way to bail. Right. But the, the best way. También me pasó una vez when I was like, I think I was like. 17 mm. i went on this horse ride and i grew up riding horses este, y una vez una amiga like she it, it was about a quarter mile between the desert mm -hmm. uh, the open desert and then and the the corral de los de los caballos and so there was this like long strip of of like dirt road mm -hmm. between the the desert opening and the and the corral mm -hmm. And esta chava, like, y lo pa la chingar, güey. That time, we went horseback riding on blankets. Like, now there was no fucking si chair. Like, there was uh, no pinche uh, you know, silla. Esa madre, nah. Nah, nah. True. All right. So, like, but we only took, like, a bridle. So, the bridle is, like, the part that goes in the, mo in the mouth. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Perdón. It did not have... A, the horse did not have a bridle. It only had, like, the... ¿Cómo se llama el...? Ay, ah. La rienda. Oh, okay. It only the had la rienda. The part that goes in the mouth. So you could control the you horse? You can hold the, the, like, yeah, and then you could either go left or right. So how do you make the horse turn? Uh, you, I don't yeah, know. Was the, the thing is in the mouth, and then and then you turn one, like, with one hand, you pull on one side of the rienda. And that's the side and it that turns? that turns them to the right, and then it just makes their head oh, turn, right? right. But the bri and the bridle goes from the mouth to the chest, and that's what keeps the horse, when you when you say, oh, when you say, whoa, or when you say, stop, is that you pull on the rienda, mm -hmm. and then he goes like, th his head goes back, and he's like, okay, this means stop. 
you put it like equally on both sides? Yeah, on both sides, yeah. Okay. So when there's no bridle, the bridle is what goes from the mouth to the chest. Hmm. And that keeps the horse from like bucking you in the head, like from not bucking you, from bumping you with their head. That from mm -hmm. So like we didn't put those on either. We just went oh, pinchy shit. bareback way. <laughs> blanket, chingonas, no? So we're out there. Somebody forgot to close the fence uh, and the horse saw. And he's like, aquí soy culero. Right. And he's like, it's I'm on. going home, bitches. <laughs> so he like fucking, he goes for it. And I'm like, whoa. And he starts like, like hitting este, not bucking but he starts like um pinning his head back like mm -hmm. como nail way i'm going forward mm -hmm. i'm like este me va a dar un tope way. and then if i pull too much he's just gonna he's just gonna like uh stand up and kick like push me off no right so he said fuck way yeah va way and then he sees freeway he opens the door he sees freeway and he fucks it dude motherfucker takes off and i'm like no mames, way, ya me chingue. Damn. And then so I'm thinking, do I jump off or do I stay on? And I'm like, what am I gonna do when he gets there? So I'm like, ya me chingue, dude. Like I have to stay on. If I jump off, I run the risk of breaking my anything, dude, or the him stepping on me, or anything. So I was like, stay on. So boy, ways, I have a quarter mile to figure out what I'm gonna do when he stops. So I'm thinking, okay, horses are animals of habit. He's used to turning into the stable to the right. Right. So he's going to stop facing the stable. So that means the momentum's going to push me to the left. Mm -hmm. So I need to hold on to dear life more on my right. So lo agarré y me agarré así con todo lo que pude, dude. <laughs> and like, fuck, he stopped exactly how I thought he would stop. Oh, and I fucking barely held on. Like he, I, I mean, it was like, so that's the kind of experiences I think about right. when I'm in, in stages where people start throwing gallons and shit. Because that's happened. Like, una vez. When people start throwing fuck gallons. Fuck yeah, man. When I was, when I was in um, Sonido Cachimbo, we opened up for Panteón Rococo. Right. And El Fitch, El Festival Internacional Chihuahua. Oh, shit. And there was like 1,800 people, dude. Shit. Something like that, yeah. And then like, este, pinche... They started getting, so this was like, this was one of the first concerts after the Violencia and Juarez. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. people were like eager. They wanted fucking, they wanted to, they wanted to be somewhere positive, dude. Right, right. So ahí estamos, we're opening up for Rococo, and they want to see Rococo now. Mm -hmm. And there was some sound issue. Siempre es eso, way. Some sound, sound shit. Issue, yeah. yeah. And so they start throwing water bottles. And we're like, and I'm just like, you know, like moving my leg, like, ay, wey, pasó la pinche water bottle. Y look, mm -hmm. ahí viene un pinche galón. And like, ay, la verga, ducking that one too. And that was my first gig with these dudes, man. And I was like, fuck. That shit's fucking dangerous, dude. Yeah, man. Y lo, so eventually, like, they started and we were cool. Mm -hmm. Y lo, también me pasó, este, when I was in the Chamanas and DF, we played at. Um, oh, shit, you guys played DF? Yeah, we played That's in, in the Vive Latino. Oh, shit. And there was an issue with the previous the previous group ended late, and mm -hmm. then we were having sound issues. Mm -hmm. So we started 12 minutes late. Oh, shit. Yeah, dude. And it was like, fuck. And people were, like, starting with the, Ularo! and then throwing oh. fucking water bottles. Dude. Oh, yeah, dude. dude. And I was like, fuck. I was like, can somebody tell me how much time we have? And then so, you know, I started like, hey, dudes, like, I just want to say, like, thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. the, there's sound problems. Mm -hmm. uh, we really want to start as soon as possible, but I would really be grateful if you guys could be a little more patient. Mm -hmm. the, we're going to have a great time, etc. And yeah, they calmed down. We were able to play. It was fucking cool. I was in that nerve wracking when you went out there. Fuck yeah, that dude. Though. Yes. That shit's fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. And then one time, también, me dio así como, ah, because we opened up for Calle 13 with Frontera oh, Bugalú. Shit. Yeah. Uh, I was no longer in Frontera Bugalú, but they asked me que les tirara paro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it was at the Socorro, at the SEC. Oh, okay, I, yeah. yeah. Este, we, I don't remember how many people there were, but it was a shit ton of people, man. I didn't know they did concerts there at the SEC. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Socorro, no, the Socorro Entertainment Center. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. The, yeah, yeah. The, not, not the speaking rock shit? Yeah. The, I oh, guess okay. it's the sick. I don't know. The, ah, the, I thought the, sick. the sack was like the, the, the one. The activity. On, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So that was, that was cool. That was the first. I think that was the first one. Do you still get nervous? Though? Like yeah. if you were to go on stage? It depends. On but yeah. What? Well, it depends on how prepared I feel. Mm, okay, and then okay. it also depends on... On, uh, yeah, like how, how prepared and how many people there are. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, they would like. That's crazy. Yeah. And uh, uh, before we, we we were started the podcast, you were telling me that you were doing uh, some projects with Intocable. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That's because that's badass. Yeah, it's the. Well, I in the past I recorded some backup vocals for for them for a song called Cuidare on their album Highway. Right. And that was really cool. They're really, really amazing, fun, and like chill people. Like, how did you connect with them? Like, how did y'all? Like um, they were recording. They were recording in in Sonic Ranch, mm, and okay. um, and this the Hector Carrion called me mm. to record some backup vocals because they wanted to get a girl voice on there. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's fucking cool, dude. I've always been a fan of that band. Mm -hmm. of Intocables. Me too. Oh yeah. Pues, este, recently, like they uh, they asked me to do some covers for them, That's some some of their songs that they wanted mm -hmm. for uh, for like to play before their their entrance right. to concerts. So that's cool. Yeah. That's fucking dope, dude. Yeah, like I was telling you too, dude. Um, I think tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and interview that Los Rieleros guy, Daniel. Esquivel, I think that's his last name. Yeah. Um, and it's it's exciting. I'm a really I'm a fan of that guy. Dude, I'm <laughs> I'm a fan too. Like honestly, so, right? I was I was I mentioned I'm like, dude, like I've always wanted to work with them, or do something with them, or or like I don't know, learn from them. I think they're like they're really fucking badass. They are badass, yeah. dude, dude. And the singers, he's really fucking nice, dude. He's really cool. I offer the money for the. For the podcast, he's like, no, no. Lo más importante es hacer la entrevista and all that. Like, oh. yeah. yeah, dude. So yeah, you should reach out to them. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. And I like, I think they do have that school on Montana, dude, the where they record yeah. and then they they show people how to fucking use the recording studio and all that shit. And I think they record there too, Los Rieleros, when they're gonna record. Yeah, they see, record there. Pass contact. Yeah, dude, for I'm sure. Down, man. Man. For sure, dude. I'll let you know and shit. Y luego al rato pinches backup vocals ahí con los rieleros. Right, dude. O un dueto, no sé, algo chico. Dude, whatever comes up, homie, you know? Yeah, I write rancheras and corridos, but most... I think, like, I'm better at rancheras, for sure. You write them? Yeah, fuck yeah. Oh, shit. How many have you written so far? Um, Right now, I see that I feel, like, acceptable, two. Two? But they're, like... I think that I think that writing rancheras is my strong point mm -hmm. of songwriting. Wow. Yeah, and I I never gave them a ch I never like I haven't written that many mm -hmm. because I've been in so many different types of bands. Like right. I have more cumbias than I do rancheras. Mm -hmm. But recently I'm like, nah, dude, I want to go I want to go into the ranchera thing because I think that's my strength. So so is that what's next for you? Like you just um. I think I think like that's part of what's next. Mm -hmm. the, I think right now, like in the meantime, I'm more like dealing with like um, f finding myself, like finding my voice. I've been right. like, like I feel like uh, so much of ourselves is not ourselves. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, what do you mean? So much of ourselves is not ourselves. So much of ourselves is the other. You know, so much of ourselves is been imposed. Right, you right, know, it's right, a, right. So much of ourselves is like a reaction to our life and to what we've lived and what we've gone through or seen or heard. Mm -hmm. And so I want to, I want, I like, I, I've been working on, was going there, going in, like just, just like meditating a lot and, and realize, like paying attention to what my thoughts are and where, and where they come from and um, mostly what my thoughts are. Mm -hmm. e, and what what am I before that what am I before my thoughts and mm -hmm. and how much like 
what am I like take if you take away my thoughts mm. and my reactions like what am I and who am I and what what lies there what is there so um, that's been an interesting journey like I feel like at the beginning of COVID like well last year was really fucked up for me like emotionally este como que well I think like um let me get to that in a little bit and let me finish something real quick go for it so after UTEP I got into Chamanas okay And then the reason why I got into Chamanas was because I had just taken a curanderismo history course mm -hmm. at UTEP with Dr. Yolanda Leva. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I fell in love with this, with this information I came across, that there was Chamanas that they do song healing in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And there's different, there are different types of Chamanas that do this, this kind of work. And I was you so said interested. song healing? Song, okay, yeah. Okay. I was a con el canto. Mm -hmm. and, and I felt like, like, wow, dude, like, uh, este, this is something that really interests me. And I, I really thought about, like, oh, I want to finish my degree so that I can get into a master's degree for ethnomusicology mm -hmm. and study these chamanas and, and learn, like, is it, what is the part that heals? Like, is it intent? Is it the sound waves? Like, Is it the types of notes that they use? What kinds of chords are they using? Like, what, what chants do they say? Like, does mm. the person understand the language? Like, ¿qué es? ¿De dónde viene? So, when I ran out of funds and I had to get out of school and I had to deal with my, some of my emotional stuff, is the, the opportunity to get into a, a band that I felt uh, was, was uh, like a, uh, a band that, that was going to offer more, like, promising... Uh, ¿cómo se llama? Uh, results because mm -hmm. I'd been in so many bands before but we were just so disorganized and it was like like underground kind of stuff you know mm -hmm. so this band was going to be pop and I really feel that my musical life is like is like I'm, I'm here to experience all the genres and get to learn like what what does each genre have to say emotionally right, right. you know Mm -hmm. They're like languages. Yeah. And so I wanted to experience uh, like this indie pop sound, which was kind of like Bossa Nova. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the only thing was that it was a little more, it was louder. It was like, it was like Bossa Nova, but I was, it was going to be louder. So mm -hmm. that was the difficult part for me because it's hard to sing airy and loud. Mm -hmm. So... So then I, you know, I got into Chamanas and then it, it just took off so fast, you know. Everything was just so fast. In the span of two years, we were nominated to a Latin Grammy. Chandler. We had toured, like, in, we had toured, like, Mexico and U.S. And it was, and they were starting to make offers to go to Colombia and to go to uh, other damn. parts of Latin America, etc. And, um, and then, uh, you know, I feel like a lot of ensembles are like rainbows, dude. Like, they're only here for a little bit and yeah. they're very beautiful for a little bit and... And, um, and yeah, and so, so, uh, we split ways and mm. then, and then, uh, I never really got to deal with my emotional shit because I got so busy so quick, man. Right. My, yeah. my plan was I'm going to go back to school, finish in five years, finish, finish like in a year. And then in five years, I'll have my master's degree. Mm -hmm. I have my little cumbia ensemble that I was working on because I had gotten like an AIP, an artist incubator program. Uh, este, What's an AIP? Sorry. It's an artist incubator program uh, mm -hmm. grant from, mm -hmm. from, 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 the, from the city. Mm -hmm. So de allí yo iba a empezar a evolucionar this concept of, um, of uh, creating a metaphorical bridge through cumbia and jazz. Mm -hmm. uh, through cumbia and jazz and the musicians. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea was that I felt that cumbia is like the engine. It's, the, it's like a heartbeat. Yeah. Because in, in, in it's, and it's like, like, in, like in Latino America, people, they don't have the opportunity or they don't have the choice to say, I feel like shit today. I'm not going to go to work. Yeah. True. So, you know, they, they, have, they have like song forms like cumbia where like there's some cumbias that are really fucking sad man really fuck yeah sad cumbias. you ever heard of um cuando lo negro sea bello nah. de andrés landero mm -mm. dude 
It's such a beautiful and sad song about mm. racism, dude. Oh, shit. And it's, and it's like, and this is like, this is the type of oppression that I feel that, that, that Latino America lives. And the, the type of oppression that we, I feel that we live here in La Frontera también. Mm. Is that in Juarez, dude, and, and some people, they don't have the choice to stop and take a break. They mm. have to fucking work. If they feel like shit, they can't take a mental, mental health break. Yeah. It's like, nah, wait, my kids, they need to fucking work. They need to, they need to eat. Yeah. So, like, para mí, la cumbia es como esa parte de la experiencia de ser, de ser de la frontera. Is mm -hmm. that there's these aspects of ourselves that are, that are that. And that's that engine, that whole, like, damn, dude, like, es una chinga and we still gotta go. So I feel like cumbia is like a meditative, it's, it's almost like a meditative music. Right. Because it's like, it's 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 the same like tss, 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 mm -hmm. and it just keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going throughout the whole entire song and it doesn't matter what you do and then you have people who are dancing collectively yeah. through this traumatic experiences and these words that they relate to right mm -hmm. and so this is like a collective meditation a collective therapy right. so la gente está bailando cosas tristes and, and as a community, as a colectivo, they're healing in the best way that they can, right? And jazz, oh, you, you look like you had a question. I was just like tripping out on the, on the, the whole sad cumbia, dude. Dude. And all the cumbias I've ever heard were just upbeat, happy. Well, the, it's upbeat, and it's like that's the optimistic part mm -hmm. of the way. There is no, you have to wake up at 5 in the morning and show up. You have to. Like in, in Mexico, dude, and in, in, in other parts of Latin America, yeah. you have to wake up at four in the morning to take a bus ride to, to some place that's two hours long, yeah? And then you get there, and you work 12 hours or 15, and then you got to ride that bus back, and you are not even making, you're not, you're not even making like, shit, dude. Like, okay, like $5 a day, dude. You're not even making that. I have a friend, I have a homegirl, she has two kids working in the Maquila and Juarez. I asked her the last time how much she get paid a month. Homegirl said like 500 bucks a month, dollars. That ain't shit, dude. That's just like a rent. That's yeah. crazy, dude. Sorry for No, no, yeah. In, in these, and she's probably having to take double shifts. She's probably, yeah. Well, she works like 11 hours or something, yeah. dude, for yeah. bullshit. Yeah, and then and then and then you wonder why there's a drug problem, dude. Because it's like, how the fuck are you gonna stay awake so long in these sh like shitty ass jobs, dude? And that's where the the whole term the maquiloco comes from. Like, maquiloco. Yeah, because there's people that take double shifts and they have to. Se tienen que meter chingaderas, wey. Like, how are you gonna do it? Cómo van a progresar? And then yeah. they get stuck in that hole. Y ahí están los güeyes vendiéndoles, you know, like, yeah, dude. And then what, what trips me out is. Whenever like a, a girl starts like at a maquila in Juarez, they always start like at night. Like they're always going like at 9 p.m. and get out like fucking f 6 a.m. or some yeah. shit. Yeah, and these are the women that end up being victims of femicide. Right. Oh, and then. The system is set up for that. It's, these are traps. Yeah, dude, it's fucking nuts. And we uh, we also asked JJ Arms about the, femi the femicide and shit. He said that. All that was, dude, was the clinics in Juarez. He's like that they were um, killing women for their organs and shit. That that's, and that they would trade them, huh? That's what he was saying, that they would trade these organs and all these clinicas. It was just the fucking vendiendo organos, wey. And they were saying that it was the police and all this. He's like, it wasn't them. It was just, it was the hospitals doing all these organs fucking trade well there's still it's still happening right like like but they're just not reported anymore damn dude but shit that's yeah. fucking that's crazy man i think it's, a lot of people are involved yeah i think, like, I think a lot more people are i mean i don't know but it just seems like it's it just seems like the criminal organizations like they they make so much money that it's like Right, but what's the point? Like, so the point is power and money, dude. Unfortunately, this is the this is the this is what I'm saying. Like, this is a system that we live in, like a system where it's like just move forward, dude. Don't acknowledge, don't acknowledge your shit. Mm -hmm. Don't acknowledge your brokenness and 
and these things, these these situations in which you didn't learn something, and so you're vulnerable. You're just they just pick vulnerable people, and then vulnerable people who live in a in a system of powerlessness, and the only way to get to gain power uh, power is through corruption and and taking advantage of other people's powerlessness yeah dude it sucks what do you think of this new president in mexico well, it's not new but the amlo guy uh, i don't know enough to really give a, a an okay. educated like but i but honestly i just think like i think all presidents are shit <laughs> i think yeah. all people have power fucking shit dude like i mean he is obviously a very smart dude and he has not done shit for the border really exactly, so dude. i mean it's like I, I just think like como todos like no mal lo que les conviene you know like it's that whole right like power when, game when everyone's dying and you're saying abrazos no balazos it's like i don't know man i don't know if you could ignore this and hope it just goes away um, I'm a big believer and you have to fight something with its same strength, you know? Or you don't think so? Well, I mean, I think it depends. It depends on the situation, but I don't even think he's trying anything. I don't think... I don't he's... either, dude. But it's just... It's, 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 I no sé. Like, I'm just one person. Like, I think... Uh, I don't think I know enough to really, like, uh, propose, like, a... Uh, a solution yet like i mm. i haven't really spent enough time to really think about it like like i said I, at the moment i'm i'm barely in a space where i'm finally dealing with my shit mm -hmm. you know and this is shit that's like shit from my entire life like mm -hmm. and um it was no sé like i, I like I, I just think that um i think that we really need to take time to work on ourselves first, mm -hmm. uh, everybody individually, so that we know how to discern and trust ourselves in situations. Ese, pero pues es que está muy cabrón, güey, porque pues hay mucha gente que... How are you going to have time to work on yourself when you don't have money to, for food? Right, You know, exactly. like, you don't have money for shelter or... For your kids' education. Anything, and yeah. God damn, dude. Is that really where we are? It's that Absolutely. hard for our people to build equity throughout time. And you see all these white kids. Fucking, they're all young and they already have their whole future planned, planned out. out. Yeah. No, Pero it's, también eso está culero, güey. It's just like, your whole life is planned out for you, bro. Like That's true. You don't have, you don't have the freedom to find yourself. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you do have the freedom to find yourself, but will you? Like, you know, I, I don't know. It's crazy. Like, I don't know. I just, at the time, like, I think the, the, the most, like, revolutionary thing for me right mm -hmm. now, for me to do, is to learn who the fuck I am. Right, yeah. Like, porque... That's true. Like, de que me sirve este, point, to point fingers and be like, ah, ese cabrón es un culero. If I don't even know the fuck I am and who I'm exploiting or who I'm stepping on toes right. or who who's like space I'm I'm like uh, stepping on, you know, like mm -hmm. it, it's just yeah. But um, I don't know. I just, it just seems that it's 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 really hard to encourage people to work on themselves. Um, it's really hard to change, dude. It's like a whole fucking. Tienes que tratar mucho because it's it's it's. It, your brain is molded that way. But it's. I think it's harder not to. I mean, it's hard is to it? change. Fuck yeah! But it's harder not to change because, dude, there's so much pain and suffering in the way that we live. But don't you think people get comfort in that though? Like that's how that, they learn how to live. But uh, yes, yes. But, but it's so like, no sé, wey. Like, te digo que maybe we just all have to hit rock bottom in order for shit to like change. That's the thing. We have to suffer, dude. We have to know what's up so we could start seeing other parts of 
reality. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like opening new realms of shit because you understand this other shit somehow. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's just, we all try to focus in a way to help. Like, I really want to help my people, dude. Like, Mexicanos, like, I think a lot of us are ashamed to be Mexicanos. And if we want to be smart, we have to leave this Mexicano identity and try to be European. Or, and it, that, that, that makes me sad because I feel that it's, we're not happy like that, you know? Yeah. It's like a Volkswagen trying to be a Ferrari and you're like, why don't you just enjoy being a fucking Volkswagen, bro, and and be beautiful like that? You know what I mean? Like you don't need to fucking be something else to be proud of who you are, your identity, and be smart and sophisticated. So I, I, yeah, I think that I think that relates a lot to like, pues es que sí, güey. O sea, that relate. I feel like that that is like relates so much to growing up in a place where. They're always telling you that you're dumb. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know? It's mm -hmm. the same. It's like growing up in a place where they're always telling you that Spanish is less. Mm -hmm. Or, they, you know, like I, I was fortunate that in my house, mis papás siempre me dijeron que el español era bonito y que en la casa se iba a hablar español y que, no, y que en esa casa no había... We were not... We were not um, que, my dad was like, en esta casa nadie se avergüenza de ser mexicano. Nunca. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it was like... Okay, like that was a rule as a kid. And so I guess like my family was always very, very like adamant with that. Mm -hmm. este, and even then I went through some some time period where, you know, like the, the external, like people f outside of my family were like mm -hmm. always finding ways to make you feel less for being less Anglo or less... Este, you know, or or like they they would try to prize you for being less Mexicano. Mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They they wanted you to be more agringado, and yeah, that I think that that's part of the, the that journey that I'm talking about. Like, well, I mean, I think my my stuff is is um. It also has a lot to do with gender, because I grew up in a place where uh, my dad wanted a son, so oh, sure, I yeah. was his son. Damn. Yeah, I was Jorge. <laughs> Straight up. Shit, yeah, dude. So, so, so yeah. Uh, what does that mean, though? Like That he, means he wanted a son. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so, but, like, uh, how was your life like that growing up? Like, what was different well, than like, if you wanted I got a to, daughter? I got to do a lot of shit that my sister didn't get to do. Mm, okay, okay. Like, I would get to cuss and... And uh, mm. be outside and and este, run around and and pinchy travel and mm. and I got to tell people what to do. And your sister couldn't. No, because she saw her more as a woman. She had to a dress daughter. a certain way and be more like limpia and like hmm. she had to act a certain way, you know. And oh, it was shit. like, yeah, it was crazy until I had puberty. Then once I had puberty, then I was a girl. <laughs> right. Yeah, and okay. then it was like. Oh, we're going to take all these privileges and now you have restrictions. But when it comes to work, we know that you can do all the jale. So you're going to work on the cars. You're going to cut see. the grass. You're going to trim the trees. You're going to dig holes with a shovel. Right. You're going to be in the sun, but you can't take care of yourself. So you can't go out. What the hell? Yeah, dude. So and That's then and then as a kid, dude, it was like aparte de the whole like, oh, you're dumb shit. There was also this whole you're gay. What you're, do you mean gay. you're gay. Yeah, it was like everybody had this like like this collective like most people around me were like, Oh yeah, it was just cause you're like gay. But you're just not out of the closet yet. Oh shit. So my a... whole life I was like, What what does gay mean? Does gay mean does gay mean that you have to make yourself like the same sex until you like it or what's that like what's that about right you know and so i liked i felt like a gay boy what the hell because i i felt like a boy because i was always like given all this privileges and this space mm -hmm. but i liked boys mm -hmm. and the boys didn't like me because they're like well you're not girly enough and mm -hmm. i was like 
but I but you're always complaining about girls and how makeup and all this <laughs> shit. And then you got a girl you could climb trees with and go do shit right. with, and you don't like her because she doesn't wear dresses. Shit. And so it's like it was just really confusing for for a lot of like. For my whole childhood, dude. My childhood, my teenage years, my 20s until it just got so confusing that I killed George. What do you mean you killed George? Yeah, man. I wrote in a journal once. I'm like, I killed George. George is dead, dude. Uh, Like, I'm done. Oh, okay, 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 dude. And so, like, uh, but I would do, like, um, you know, I would, like, make this, like, commemorative, like, kind of like Dia de los Muertos for for George every year. <laughs> and I would dress like a dude on Halloween, you know, like oh, different shit. types of dudes. Yeah. Yeah. And um yeah, and that's 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 a trip. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. Um can I ask you something? As when you were young and you you were well aware that you were Mexicano, right? Mexican and you saw people that were Darker than you, you never felt racist towards him? No, dude. Nah. Let me tell you this. I've always wanted to have darker skin, dude. And I've always uh, felt shame for having light skinned. I, I Te lo juro, wey. Yeah. Because I always I always I've always felt that dark skin is fucking beautiful, dude. Shame, like dude. beautiful. And I've and I like I used to tan, dude, so much. And oh, I was shit. like I was ashamed of going outside like pale way. So I would always like I'd make sure that I would tan at my house oh, before shit. the first day of like wearing shorts because mm-hmm. I didn't want to look fucking pale. And then, and then like, siempre me gustaban los chavitos más morenitos. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I felt shame. Like, I felt shame when when like darker skinned Mexicanos would would be like, ah, it's because you don't have to go through the shit that I do. Like my sister, you know, my sister's darker, mm-hmm. and she always had like pedos with with like her skin Mm -hmm. and and i felt bad way like i I was like fuck dude like if you just knew how beautiful you are dude i fucking wish i had your skin dude like right and like yeah i don't know i never do do you think humans are just never happy with themselves i think that's it i think i think it's the way that we grow up way like we're just always we we live in a consumerist place like Mm -hmm. As long as we live in a consumerist world, we're never going to be good enough, right. ever. Whether you, you're a guy or a girl or, you're, or you have este, straight hair or curly hair or you're dark or you're light or you're Mexicano or white. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think, I mean, it's like very few people in this world feel satisfied or happy with what they have. Yeah, and it's... I think you have to realize how special you are in a certain way. I remember when I was a kid, I've always been ashamed of being Mexican, right? I was, I was born in Mexico. We moved to Lubbock when I was a kid, and I was a wet back and shit. So I always hated myself for being Mexican, dude. And then I moved to Canada in, like, 2005, and my world just totally changed, dude, because, like, I was the most popular guy there, dude. All the, home, all the white girls wanted to talk to me, and... It was like, what the fuck, dude? And, and it, everyone was just obsessed with Mexicans. And I'm like, why the fuck am I ashamed of this shit? You know what I mean? It's just, you start realizing that it's just where you're from, you know? Like, I don't know. I, I, I can't explain it, but, like, we don't have to be ashamed of that shit. Yeah, dude. Like, no. we could, you want to be a better person, you study, you become smarter, but you don't have to stop being who you are. You don't have to stop claiming to be a Mexicano because it sounds ghetto. It sounds like a cholo. It's like it's who you are, dude. And you could represent it in a prestige, prestigious manner, you know, like be smart, educate yourself, be a good person, and, and be proud of who you are. Love yourself because somewhere in the world, some people like you. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it, but here that's the thing. That's why I think that's why I've taken some time to myself. Right. So like let me get back to what I was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. I was talking about that metaphorical bridge that I was Right, yeah. So I was creating this metaphorical bridge between Gumia and Jazz. Oh, yes, yes. And so like 
the jazz part of the of the of the um, fusion mm-hmm. was like the more privileged part, like with the part of like in the frontera, where there's like privileges mm-hmm. of living in a frontera. Mm-hmm. And you get to be a little more lax, especially when you're on this side. Mm-hmm. So it's like you get to pull on the time. And I wanted to use jazz because it comes from an oppressed place, right. oppressed yeah. people, and then it's been it's been. Uh, uh, made to be like this elitist music now yeah and so i wanted i wanted to show like this whole all of these like tra- these fronterizos who had some point have had an opportunity and now they're like exercising this this like in a, in a way like an exploitation of these of this like this oppressed work or these oppressed elements and mm-hmm. now that they're, they're that they're like utilizing in a in a way to for for like um privilegios you know yeah so that was kind of that fusion and so i wanted to get a masters mm-hmm. uh and while i was getting my masters finish that ensemble and then maybe think like oh pues al rato chamanas is gonna take off right but it took off a madre oh, quick, huh? right Shit, yeah and i didn't have i didn't have um is the time to to work on that existential crisis that I was mm-hmm. give, trying to give myself time to by getting out of school. Was it still on your mind when Chamanas was already taking over? You I didn't have time. I didn't have time to be on my mind. And mm-hmm. the reason why I got in Chamanas, aparte de que I was like, well, I think these guys like, you know, they're I think they're ready to do something. Mm-hmm. It was like because I had never really given myself the chance to think like oh, I want to I want to experience like fame or mm-hmm. money or etc you know mm-hmm. and that was the first time that i was like i want to try why not like right. am i gonna live my whole life just being a musician and not and not admit to myself that i would like to Make try and go up yeah. there yeah yeah and don't say system uh everything just t- took off i'm ah and the reason why i got into it the biggest reason was because i had just taken that course and in the in the curanderismo history mm, mm. and i read about these chamanas that cured with the canto right. and so i felt like well bueno, i'm not gonna i'm not a chamana way mm-hmm. but i do practice my own my like i i i like to learn about healing right. and um healing myself and healing how other people heal and like you know like plantas and hierbas and mm-hmm. copal and stuff so um and ceremonia certain ones in the so i got into it because i felt that that was a path that i needed to take right i was like well maybe i won't learn about it but who knows maybe i will mm-hmm. so being in a being in a commercial ensemble that takes off that quickly is like very it can be very abusive very abusive yeah like just it could be very like just the way that things like take off so quick like you become very abusive to yourself because it's like i don't fucking have time to take a shit bro Mm -hmm. like i gotta be at this interview right now Mm -hmm. and i can't eat because i gotta be at this other interview like Mm -hmm. i mean when we went to vive latino dude like it's in todo in todo ese dia dude i didn't fucking eat the whole day dude. dude and it was like if I wanted to eat, I needed to go to the restroom and fucking eat some oh, damn. nuts, dude. That was the only because it was like oh, busy. interview, 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 todo el día, dude. Plus, that- it was like wake up, interview, 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 no time for food, gig, interview, 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 interview for the entire day, and I was vegetarian, so that was really fucking rough for me. Yes, yeah, so no le quito the fun out of it. Like it wasn't like, dude, this is getting on my nerves. Or well, I didn't, I didn't even it. have time to, I didn't have time to assess anything mm, emotional, dude. Damn, it was that. Yeah. Crazy. It was like I'm tired. I gotta go to bed. I gotta wake up. Mm-hmm. And then, the only time I really had time to express myself was during the shows. Mm-hmm. So they were very emotional, and I mean, on the on, what I did, what I feel was really cool about. All that experience is I really, really learned a lot about performance. And I, I think mm-hmm. I grew a lot as a performer. A lot. Like, I think I excelled. Like, mm-hmm. a, like I don't even, I don't think I can really talk about, like, the, the percentage that I excelled. But it was a chingo way. O sea, fui de, fui de, de 
playing my biggest show at the SEC to fucking playing at the 930 Club, uh, the Highline ball, Ballroom in, in New York, dude. Like, the 930 That's Club crazy, in Virginia. Dude. Like, opening up for Beach House. Like, shit like that. You know, like, like having, like, crazy dinners and with, like, large, big, big... I don't know, like people in the industry, you know, like mm -hmm. being at the Latin Grammys, like, pero, pero, so when that ended, is the I really needed time to deal with all this shit that I didn't have time to deal with before mm -hmm. the group, and then all the shit que se acumuló during the group, right. and then, y luego, and then it was like, you're here with yourself, dude, yeah, and... You don't have energy for anything else right now. Shit. You know? So it was like, mm -hmm. fuck. So for like, I would say like, and then it, it was really cool because I felt like um, I, in, in that time, in the time after that, I have learned so much about myself that mm -hmm. I wouldn't have ever known otherwise. Like I pushed myself to my limit, right. to the pinchy bottom way. Yeah. So like, um, that was pretty rough and then and then um and then i started kind of like um i didn't want to deal with my shit after a while you know like because it gets really heavy what shit exactly what just my that? shit like like just you know shit. growing up feeling dumb all your life mm, okay. uh and yeah. then and then because of that uh i didn't ha i didn't know how to set healthy boundaries mm -hmm. so i would get involved in 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 bands and relationships with very toxic people because Shit. i was obviously toxic myself you know right, right. i didn't know how to set my boundaries mm -hmm. so este it was just a lot of uh a lot of you know situations in which my boundaries were overstepped in really very very intense ways mm -hmm. and so it was about forgiving myself and i wasn't ready to forgive myself yet Right. So then I started like working a lot, like uh, with um, pues empecé así como que I want to get busy. So mm -hmm. I started uh, working a lot more with the community, mm -hmm. and then you know how that is. Like you work with the community, it's a lot of Hollywood. There's a lot of shit that always needs work, and Hell they yeah, always man. needs work. Mm -hmm. Yes, them. So then. Uh, in 2019, I I really started getting involved a lot with the like the whole like migrant, the migrant issues. Gail Trump has really yeah, like, yeah. really pr well not just Trump because Obama was pretty bad. He deported way more people than Bush. Yeah, dude, like that guy. It was like a chingaquedito, you know. And we didn't even realize it until after. Yes, este, yeah. Entonces, este. Pues se, se puso se puso feo la cosa y luego pues este cabrón nomás llegó pa 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 meter el pinche home run, you know? And so like it, like it was just so much like heavy, like this whole like MPP like stay in Mexico shit is like fucked up, bro, because like there's a lot of people that are fleeing from a shitty situation. And then they're just being set up in another shitty situation mm -hmm. where they don't know anybody, dude. And they don't have funds because they were probably stolen along the way and raped and all kinds of fucked up shit. And then you got these people like that was the most. Eso fue lo más, lo, lo que más me quebró, güey. Fue ver a los inmigrantes, güey, estar en las calles, en Juárez, en el piso, güey, en el pinche invierno, güey. Y luego todavía para acabar la chingar, güey. Alguien, o sea, on the bright side, somebody got them tents and they were sleeping in tents on the floor right in front of the bridge right when you cross, walking. En Chamizal. No, eso también, pero Esa, en Chamizal, eh. en Zaragoza y también en, 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 en Santa Fe. Mm. And then, Shit. dude, the fucked up thing is some asshole still would go y les cobraba cuota, güey. Les cobraba ay, 60 ay. pesos por día mínimo. What? And if they lo if they didn't pay, they had to leave. And if they left, they would lose. They were they they had been told that they were gonna lose their spot in getting uh, uh their court date and and so they were supposed to have to stay there until they had their court date or they would lose their spot in court. What the, what fuck, the fuck, dude? dude? Yeah. And so I'm I, like, it's like, wait, o sea, saber 
saber que tú, que esta gente está pasando cosas tan culeras, güey. Like, it's like, uno, güey, que, que no tiene muchos recursos. Like, I don't have a lot of money, dude. Mm -hmm. But, but yet, uh, the people like myself and the other people that I knew that were helping also don't have a lot of money. And they're there helping. Mm -hmm. And it's like, pretty much, I'm giving the person that needs help 60 pesos just so that they can give it to that asshole and those many other assholes that are taking from them. When they, it's like, dude, they need money to eat, way To yeah. fucking... And you got people that are todavía exploiting the fact that they don't have anything. Like, how, that to me was like, So disheartening, dude, because I was like, how the, f what kind of humanity, what is this, dude? Yeah. Like, what is humanity? What is a fucking human being? What is a person, dude? What, what is the definition of, of this? Mm -hmm. And, and how much am I contributing to it? If I, like, what the fuck, dude? Like, si no les doy dinero, no pueden comer. Pero si les doy dinero, se lo tienen que dar a un pinche culero. Yeah. You know? And so I was like, it was like. Just too much for my brain to handle, dude. And my heart. Yeah. And then, to fucking top the rim off, uh, as soon as 2020 started, my friend was murdered. What the fuck, dude? She was it, murdered in Juarez. Yes. And, 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 and then, like... Was she helping? Or she what? was she a she was a feminist. She was a she was a um, activist. Thing. She was an artist. She was a muralist. She was a beautiful human being of 26 years old, dude. And she had a son, a two year old son. Y la mataron, güey. And so, eso, güey, o sea, quebró a toda una comunidad, güey. Yeah. You know, and, and like toda toda mi comunidad que que en la que en la que siento que pertenezco en Juárez, we were fucking broken, dude. Mm -hmm. And then and then and then here in in the US, like it was like you know, to hear people and it really just hurts my feelings. And I, I know that I I need to be stronger or maybe like, you know, I I can't I can't really like point fingers or I don't know, or maybe, pero like when people are like, "Hi, it's cuz Juárez is so dangerous." I just don't go over there because, like, oh, my God, they, they're just, like, really dangerous out there. Or when people look at Juarez like like the bad sister, you know, like, ay, mm. todo pasa. Every time they portray Juarez, it's violence. Yeah. And it's like, no nomás hay violencia, güey. Hay gente que vive allí. Hay, hay, hay vida, hay amor, hay, hay de city. todo, güey. Yeah, and so and it's just, it, that shit really, it, it just broke me, dude. That was the tip of everything. And I was like... Dude, like, fuck, like, ¿cuál es la esperanza? And that's how I felt, dude. Like, and I had a, I had like a, the mm. deepest fucking emotional and and existential crisis of my entire life. Ya ahí me pegó todo, güey. Todo lo, todo lo que I had been trying to deal with and didn't. The fucking like everything, dude. It was just like I honestly, to be very honest, dude. At the and then COVID, and then COVID happens. <laughs> COVID happens, and then it's like. Oh, by the way, existential crisis, and you're by yourself, and you don't, and you can't leave, and you have to sit here and deal with it. No mames, wait, ansiedad, oh, depresión, pinche crisis, and and like, dude, straight up for like two weeks, I didn't want to be on this earth anymore. Damn, dude, you serious? I'm fucking dead serious, no dude. Mames, dude. And I was like, what? Qué, qué hay, wey? Qué hay en este pinche mundo, wey? And 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 to be very honest, dude, like. <laughs> y luego todavía me sentía culero más aún because it was like and I'm not even fucking strong enough to fucking off myself dude like I'm a fucking coward and I can't even end my own life that's how fucking dark that shit got dude it got so dark and then there came a day you know like like um fortunately in my life like mm -hmm. este um, you know like I, I, I do I am surrounded by some beautiful people, dude, and That's and good. um and I was like I can't, you know, like who the fuck am I to put this shit on someone else? You know, like yeah. whatever I do to myself is gonna affect others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there came a point where I was like I have to do something, way, and so I started fucking meditating, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I started 
getting fucking books, you know, and like, and talking to people and, and, um, and I, and I stopped being on social media so much because I felt like, 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 uh, social media can be a little trappy, you know, like, it's like, like, I don't want to be, I tried, I tried to be like authentic. I tried to be, uh, um, open about how I really felt Mm -hmm. and some people were like oh don't feel bad i'm like no dude i need to fucking feel bad i need to feel this shit exactly yeah and and so i was like no social media for a while so este then just like i i started like meditating Mm -hmm. empecé con 10 minutos y luego con 20 and then i decided to do 40 and then i was like i'm gonna give myself an hour every day of meditation as soon as i wake up right and and in my meditation i realized that that a lot of my anger towards the world came from self from resentment towards myself mm-hmm. for never giving myself the time for me right like it's like all my energy has always been externalized mm-hmm. into a group into a band into a performance into turning in homework or trying to prove that i'm not dumb or trying to prove that i'm this or that mm-hmm. i that i can hack being on tour that i can work with vatos that i can fucking like you know because being in the music industry as a female dude is mm-hmm. fucking hard yeah Porque todo mundo is like it's all man based it's all man ruled and right. like if you want to hang you gotta hang the way they want you to hang mm-hmm. and that shit sucks like so, you know, there, there comes a point where you have to analyze, you know, how much of this is your fault. Right. And it's like, well, I put up with it. Well, why? And where does that come from? And it comes from a lack of confidence. And it comes from wanting to prove. It comes from that part of that Tetris mm-hmm. where you, like, something didn't happen right. And you just built a home on top of, on a, of a broken ladrillo, you know. And, yeah. and, it's, and that's... That's what you, I got to go back and fix. So so ever since COVID, dude, like I've been meditating between 40 minutes to an hour to like an hour and a half every day. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like, pff, ahorita, like, I can tell you no and not feel bad. Mm-hmm. I can fucking, I, I'm, I know so much more about myself and, and I blame less. Like, like it's like, de, de repente I catch myself blaming. I'm like, ah, cabrón, de donde viene eso, güey? right right you yeah. know like and and uh you know a lot of a lot of the way that we see the world is the is the way that we that we feel inside right you know and also yeah. to, i think to my opinion also a lot of that self-hurt comes from our self-chatter like uh-huh. the, the the how we talk to ourselves like uh-huh. ah, pendejo. That's your pendejo, and right. I mean, I heard psychiatrists say that you have to talk to yourself as if you were talking to a baby that you love. Yeah. You know? You would never fucking tell a little baby that they're dumb. Or right. That's pendejo, no sirves para nada. That's what you tell yourself. Yeah. And I think... inútil, ni siquiera sabes hacer esto. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what... I think that's what motivates us a lot to self-hate us, you know? Self-hate ourselves and not be able to think that we are able to do all these other crazy shit and it's like damn dude we have to stop um that chatter but it's like where does it come from you know sometimes i'm like does it come from colonialism or you like always talking shit to them like pendejo and then you know your grandparent well your ancestors grew up like that and yeah yeah that's how they show because yeah, historical trauma right because like i see all these mexicanos and they le hacen cariños a sus hijos. Ay, pendejo, baboso. It's like, oh, yeah. Why? Like, why would you dish them de cariño? Like, I don't. Yeah, I, that's some, that's some, like, mental fuck, dude. It is. Yeah. It is like, is that because of the traumas that we've had throughout our fucking existence as peoples? Because they say that traumas keep on through genes, you know, like, whatever traumas you get. Yeah. Most likely they're going to be followed by your kids or whatever. But it's like, God damn, dude, when does this stop? This is- well, it stops with you. And that's the beautiful, like, it stops with whoever decides, like, 
that the cool thing is you have the information you have enough information mm. to realize the concept of historical trauma yeah. you have enough information to know that this is not your fault or your parents fault or your grandparents or whoever like it, it just happened dude it, i yeah. mean and it, it's just a it's a system and so how can we in the present take charge and change our future change our present and change our future and so like you know when i have because i i mean i have i have pinches momentos de de me da ansiedad because i start talking shit to myself i'm like oh mm -hmm. you can't do this or ah oh, this sucks or you suck or you can't you know mm -hmm. and then that's when it's like okay dude pull yourself out of that shit Go fucking meditate. Go look at the sun. No sé. Ve, ponte en el sol y pinche medita, güey. Right. And it just, it just takes 10 minutes to reset. Right. And then you're like, oh, shit, dude. That was some crazy little fucking pinche tantrum mm -hmm. of, of, that came from, from like, low self-esteem, ego. Right. And, and I'm reset, dude. Like, I'm good. Right. Everything, everything everything always has an opportunity to a better outcome always mm -hmm. it just depends on resetting and and you resetting what is what do you mean yeah like if you take if you you know if you're you're going through this whole like um ah or like you know you want to you want to interview somebody and you're like ah, that motherfucker would never answer me mm -hmm. ah no no pues no le voy a marcar güey no le voy a marcar because they're not gonna answer because you know ah, Yo que, o ese wey que es bien acá. Mm -hmm. You don't really fucking know. That's you in your head. Yeah. So if you just take time to meditate, really like reset, like give yourself the time to just clear your mind. Mm -hmm. Don't think about, try like whatever you think about, let it go. Whatever you think about, let it go. Whatever you think about, let it go. As many times, give yourself fucking three, five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then come back and that's resetting and then you realize oh shit dude everything i'm thinking is they're just everything that comes into my head are just thoughts wait mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. like there's an experience in the world and then there's your thoughts right. there's a way to experience the world without your thoughts mm -hmm. uh filtering that experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, when you say you you meditate can i tell you something yeah yeah I've always tried to figure out what that means, and I never, I, I don't know. I don't know how to, what meditating is. Um, so when you tell me, well, when you say that you meditate, what, what, what is meditating to you? Like, what, what, what is that process that you go through? Well, it, uh, meditating is just spending time with yourself. Mm hmm without the stimulation of anything else like so you're not gonna read you're not gonna listen to music you're not gonna uh este, be washing dishes or at mm -hmm. least in the beginning no like mm -hmm. you're just gonna sit with yourself you're mm -hmm. gonna close your eyes and you're gonna pay attention to your thoughts and let mm -hmm. them go okay because what happens is a lot of people when they first start meditation, they think like, oh, don't think of anything. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you're going to think about everything. Right, exactly. Right? It's like, or and even so thinking think, of not thinking. Right. That's even thinking right. itself. And so the first thing you say, ah, yeah, I don't do meditation because I suck at it. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. It's it's boring. It sucks. I, I, I don't know how to do it. I always fail. But, that's, but it's, the thing is, it's like meditation is like playing on a playground by yourself before somebody tells you what to do with all the toys mm -hmm. you know it's like if nobody told you how a slide works how would you use it right right, right. What and so you do with it? yeah so like if you just go into your mind you close your eyes and then um whatever comes up like pay attention to it for a little bit y lo mm -hmm. you know whatever comes next the whole point at least at first i think is is to uh, not be hard on yourself. Like, don't get emotionally involved with your thoughts. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, lo que pasa es que, es que este, you start thinking, right? And you, you close your eyes and you're like, oh, okay, it was, este, I had a, oh yeah, este, I went to, 
I'm remembering that time I went to Pinchy Big Eight. I don't know. Okay, and so you're at Big Eight. And so, okay, let it go. And then, and then you start thinking like, oh shit, I remember that time I stole a fucking durazno. And then you start thinking about este, you let it go, but then you or or you before you let it go, you remember this lady, right? Mm-hmm. And the lady that like caught you and reprimanded you. And then you start thinking about that lady, and you're like, pinche señora. And then you get you get involved in like that feeling, like the. Oh, the pinche señora. And then you start thinking about someone who made you feel pinche something, right? Mm -hmm. And then you start getting emotionally involved in this shit. Mm -hmm. And then then that's what you want to try to avoid. But even if you get into that, as soon as you realize that you got into it, let it go. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. But then after a while, you start noticing what kinds of thoughts you tend to have. Right. And then you start noticing like, oh, shit, dude, I tend to worry a lot or I tend to or I tend to pay attention to what other people think mm-hmm. or I tend to este, see myself through other people's points of views or I tend to be hard on myself because of this, this and this. Mm-hmm. And that's a really good beginning. Right. You start just paying attention to what kinds of thoughts you think. And then eventually you start separating yourself from those thoughts and you start contemplating who you are mm-hmm. outside of the things that you worry and think about. Right. Yeah. Pero it's, it's a process. Like, toma tiempo. Mm-hmm. Y la cosa is not to be hard on yourself. Like, mm-hmm. the, the, main, the main idea or the main point is to just give yourself the time of day. Right. Give yourself that, that energy, that time to, like, fuck up. Mm-hmm. It's okay if you think about shit. But, right. like, here's the thing. If you think it's boring to hang out with yourself, what makes you think, why, why would you give someone else that burden then? Right, exactly. So give yourself the time of day to enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. And then ya, ya puedes llegar con gente y ya, you, you don't feel so insecure with them all the time because you're like, fuck, man. Like, and if they don't like you, then you don't feel bad because they don't like you. Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh, well, they didn't like me because I triggered something in, their, in them. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't do it purposely. Like, it's just something about me reminds them of something in their past. And so that made them react. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you just start paying attention to how you are with yourself. Right. And, and if you had any ill intentions, pues I, that's your shit that you have to deal with. But if you didn't have ill intentions and someone doesn't like you anyway, pues es su pedo de ellos. Mm-hmm. But and you understand that they don't feel comfortable, so you don't you, like you don't have to like step on their boundaries. Like you're just like, oh, I know this person doesn't like me. That's cool. I like me. Right. We're we're cool. I'm cool with you. Whenever mm-hmm. you're ready, I'm I'm here. I'm not waiting for you, but I'm here. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean. And so I think that meditation is just creating space for yourself right it's 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 interesting when you say whenever you meditate the types of thoughts that go through your mind and they seem to be very um in the past Mm -hmm. and i've noticed with me when i do that when i just chill i start thinking of the future like what's gonna happen what am i gonna do what's next for me how can you know don't you you think that people have different ways of I guess meditating because of the different state of states of minds. I think I think it's definitely different experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I will say, there's many different ways of meditating, mm-hmm. and each different way uh, works for different people. Like porque también hay meditation through breathing. There's mm-hmm. meditation. So there's people that meditate with their eyes open. Mm-hmm. It's, um, there's uh, there's there's like yeah, like the other day I did this really cool one that was really cool for me. Is the where you have to stare at a candle mm. and um, and then you just fix on the candle and then when you close your eyes um, you have to pay attention to the light that you see in your eye of the candle oh, shit. Yeah. yeah and you have to focus on that and then uh, there was something else that went with it but that was really fucking cool it's the, yeah and there's there's just so many different types i mean that i'm just mentioning like what works for me mm-hmm. but um so basically you would say meditating is more just get to know your thoughts get to know what the fuck play with yourself your 
Mentally. <laughs> All right. Yeah, like it's spiritually and emotionally. Yeah. Porque te das cuenta que your emotions are reactions to your thoughts. Yeah. And what are your thoughts? And mm -hmm. it, what tends to happen is if you are a lot in the past, then you tend to be depressed. And if you're a lot in the future, you tend to be anxious. Anxious. I'm very anxious, dude. Yeah. And so how do you fix your anxiety? How do you live in right now? How? Because eso es otra cosa que me pasaba mucho. Y, and and mm -hmm. I noticed that my dad does it too. Mm -hmm. I would be in a place and I wasn't there, man. I was like thinking about what am I doing más rato? What's mm -hmm. going to happen tomorrow? Híjola, dude, like, I need to finish this and I got to do that and I got to finish this. Mm -hmm. And I, I was never here with you mm -hmm. having like a conversation right now. Right, you're it was somewhere like, else. Yeah, dude. And so how can you live? Because you don't know. I mean, do you really know if you're going to be able to finish whatever it is that you want to do tomorrow or pasado mañana? We don't know. And then mm -hmm. we're psyching ourselves out for shit that we don't know. And I'm not saying you can't make plans or don't make plans. Plans are cool. But when you're living in tomorrow, when you're so much more excited about tomorrow or hoping that tomorrow's better than today, mm -hmm. that's when you got to, you know, re well, you don't have to do anything, but like it, it, it's, it's cool to reanalyze or like it's, it's good to reanalyze. Well, not good. It's just, it's just reanalyzing where you're at right now mm -hmm. is the brings more peace to your mind right. because you're making the most out of now what you actually have control of and mm -hmm. that's your reaction or your sense of self or being in the right now right right let me ask you also um, with all that meditating so you you think every day you're in a better place Are you getting better as you go or do you feel stagnant? No, no. I Well, I feel like, I feel, mira, I feel, ahorita, I feel, I feel like I've never felt this good before, dude. Okay. Yeah. This is like, even, it's interesting, like, I remember when I was 23, like, I felt really good physically. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's probably... Physically, it's like the worst I've ever, <laughs> I've ever like. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 36. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So physically, like this is probably the least out of shape I've ever been. For sure. Definitely the least mm -hmm. out of shape I've ever been. And that's changing. Like I'm starting to, you know, meditate, meditate that as well. Mm -hmm. Pero emotionally, dude, like I'm most of the time I'm at peace. Mm -hmm. And when I'm not at peace, I know how to change that mm -hmm. i know how to reset into a place where i'm right here right now and that's good that's fucking amazing and i'm grateful for right now right and um so like from from like i'm like i feel like a completely different person is the from from right now like if i measure like how i felt like even a month ago Oh, yeah, a month ago, like about a month and a half ago, I I felt like híjole, way like I still felt a lot, uh, some anxiety, like quite a bit of it, mm. and and before that it was a nightmare, dude. Like before that was a fucking nightmare. Right. Yes, the, uh, yeah, like this, meditating has been the 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 biggest blessing for me, honestly. Mm -hmm. And so if I the the way that I feel right now. Going, it's only been four months. Like, pff, I like, I can't, I, like, o sea, no me puedo imaginar qué tan chingón va a ser, like, in a year, you know? How like, better it can get. Yeah, dude, like, I just, I'm like, and if it doesn't get better, if I stay in the in what I'm at right now, I'm fucking water with that, dude. You're like, good, you're yeah, good. fuck yeah, like, it feels really good. Y los días que no me siento muy bien, dude, like, I just reset. And then, and then my day changes. Mm -hmm. It's like, instead of having those days where like, said they, you get a flat tire and the rest of your day's fucking ruined. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, oh, you get a flat tire. That's a rough experience. Sit down and reset. And then the rest of your day is the shit. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I like to tell myself when there's problems? Like, this is what makes the movie fun, man. You yeah. know, just think about a movie where everything's okay and there was nothing to work on. No one would see that shit, right? Because it's not interesting. It's not fun. 
So sometimes, like, whenever I'm upset because, ah, oh, problems, problems. But you're like, but this is what makes your life fun. This is what makes you want to keep going. Yeah. Right? And it's, it's also perception. Right. You know, like, también, como... What do you mean, perception? Yeah, I know. Per como, like, like mm, let's say, like, maybe, maybe, let's just say this. I really, actually, I don't mind getting flat tires because I really enjoy changing flat tires, dude. Right. And I also really enjoy doing oil changes. Like, I right. love changing <laughs> the oil in the car, dude. Like, right. I love it. As the, just the whole experience is just really fulfilling for me. Yeah. I love just, you know what I like the most? Laying on the floor. Uh, Under the car, man. like, you're just like, ah, oh, and then the back, like, relaxes, and you're just there, and you're looking like, okay, I gotta take this, I gotta find the filter. Yeah, see, no, like, like, uh, I, lo I really enjoy that. So, crazy. but, but, I know that, like, my vato, dude, ese güey no le gusta cambiar el aceite. Mm -hmm. So he looks at it like, ah, fuck. So you change it for him or what? Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> pero, pero, you know, that, that's a perception thing. Yeah. So, like, uh, if he gets a flat tire, he's like, ching, ow, gotta change the tire. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Give me that <laughs> shit. So it's like, I think, like, como dicen, like, one man's trash is another, one woman's trash is another woman's treasure. Yeah, As yeah. Them, you know, it's like, uh, it's just perception. Like, look at this, te hace culero, like, está chingón or está chido for someone else. Mm -hmm. So if we just, también, if, if you're like, oh, shit, dude, like, maybe it's not that bad. Right. Or also knowing that you're not the only person in the world that's going through it. Yeah. It also helps. Yeah, that also does feel good. I remember as a kid knowing that other people had problems like me. It made me feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and then it, it is cool to to seek out like to those communities and talk to them and be like, how do you do it? And like, I, right. I love conversation, dude. Like, I love, com especially when it comes to uh, conversation about trauma. Right. Because... So many people, they just, they, they, learning how other people deal with things mm -hmm. really expands the way you can deal with things and expressing, letting out what you feel, first of all. Mm -hmm. And then, and then secondly, like allowing or like, ex like um, giving everybody else the chance to learn how you deal with it mm -hmm. allows their perception to expand. And then we realize like, como una cosa que se me hace muy chingona is like right now, like, like that women were finally talking about all the oppression and the sexual harassment that we go through in our industries, especially in the art, music, and film industries. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. And like, I think it's really cool to get to hear other, other women like, and they're, and they're, o sea, no está, no está chido mm -hmm. de que, that, that we've gone through this shit. Right. It's not cool. But I think it's really cool that, that they finally, started creating space to speak up mm -hmm. it gives everybody else um the courage to speak up and i say everybody else because men as well men go through yeah. a lot of uh rape and and sexual harassment as well and and i can't wait till men start talking about it too it's the just so that we can all start dialoguing about oppression and and boundaries right. until we all know our boundaries until then, we're, it's not gonna, the problem's not gonna go away. Like, we need to talk about our pedos and, right. set, and set healthy boundaries, but we need to have platicas first about it. Mm -hmm. Damn, dude, that's crazy. One more thing I wanted to ask you Have you ever tried ayahuasca? No. Would you? Um, Yes, but I think it would have to be with a with a chaman de confianza. Right. Oh well, yeah. Because like, yeah, I've heard some horror stories about people taking advantage of people in ayahuasca, and I don't mm -hmm. like that. Pero, yeah, I would. I would do it. I would try it. That shit's crazy. It's kind of scary. Have but you? Nah, mm -mm, I never have. But I think I would do it too. Yeah. I, I, I've I've been uh, hearing that it. It's been shown to help people with post-traumatic stress disorders, oh, really? and uh, it helps people stop smoking, and um, cancer patients, um, they give them to them when they're terminally ill. They give them uh, psilocybin, but mushrooms, yeah, mushrooms, and it's been shown that they have a better take of death. Like, they're not scared of dying no more. Yeah. They, they're happier, they're, 
So I'm like, damn, dude. Um, I, I think I should, I need to try that. Yeah. Have you tried mushrooms? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Do you like them? Um, yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, I've, 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 uh, hacen buen que no me, no me echo un mushroom. Este. Right, me too. It's been but, a long uh, time. And, uh, but I've, I, I've been to, yeah, I've, I've done, I've mm -hmm. done my share of yeah. exploring and experimenting and I've learned a lot. Right. Mushrooms are cool. Este, um, I mean, I've, I I went to a hikuri ceremony, and it was very beautiful, and I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, the mezcales help a lot too. And there's nothing you don't necessarily take anything in the mezcales, but you learn a lot, like a lot. Like right. I I learned once in a temazcal that I needed to um, occupy my space. Mm -hmm. um, it was interesting. I I went. I didn't eat breakfast. I should have. I mm -hmm. did all seven rounds, mm -hmm. and then uh, I should have gotten out on the fifth round. I stayed the seven. Y este, estaba una señora que también, she shouldn't have been there, and she was fainting. Oh, shit. So she needed more space, and so yo me hice más chiquita, mm -hmm. so that she could expand, and I guess the way that I sat cut my circulation. Oh, shit. So when I came out, I took like three or four steps, and boom oh yeah, dude. damn dude you passed out i fucking i i didn't pass out but i fell oh, like okay. i just couldn't fucking mm -hmm. yes they, they 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 took me to some chair and they did some energy work on me they, they got me normal right and then uh you know i went home and i wrote in my journal and it took me a while and i was like what i let do like i need to occupy my space like mm -hmm. it's you, you can't you like i can't always make myself smaller for other people mm -hmm. you know or i can't I, i have to start occupying my space setting my boundaries and mm -hmm. then other people need to live the consequences of their actions as well right and and i can't be like walking on eggshells so that other people live comfortably that's true dude yeah That's true. Um, one last thing. The New York Times admitted well, that the Air Force uh, is, has been seeing UFOs um, on the Pacific Coast, I think close by San Diego. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's real? I mean, I've, I, believe in, I believe that we're not the only... I just think we're like a microcosm of, of like something else you know mm -hmm. the, i really think we're like we're probably like in the universe is probably like some other being's stomach and we're just like bugs right, exactly the, or like some, some shit you know mm -hmm. like i just feel like there's gotta be other there has to be and and for for i don't know i've never seen i've never seen like ghosts or aliens or mm -hmm. But I believe that there's there's gotta be. I mean, it would be very like selfish to right. to think like, hey, we're the only. Then nomás Diosito nos hizo a nosotros like ira ira. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. I don't know. I don't know if I believe in ghosts, but I probably do believe in aliens, dude. I believe like I, that. Yeah, I think like maybe I think ghosts are like probably just another dimension that like that like intersects, you know? Right. Like there we. Can only perceive that sometimes, like, like that movie, The Others. Remember that yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, it's, damn, that'd be some crazy shit, no? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, or like Interstellar, you know? Right. It's damn. Yeah. Oh, that movie was a trip. Yeah, dude. Well, well, Amalia, thanks for coming down and having a conversation with us. Really enjoyed it. Is there anything you would like to tell? Anybody out there inspired to be a singer and to be successful at it? Oh shit! Este first, yeah, I would say este first uh, define what your word, what your meaning of success means, mm -hmm. like your meaning, not what somebody else told you. Right. And then, um, and then, and then uh, take it step by step. Right. Este, um, and I want to, um, I want to. Also, I, something that I wanted to touch on really quick was, um, I, I wanted to touch on it earlier, but I forgot. Uh, there's kids in cages, you know, 
and um, sure, we gotta get we gotta get them out. We gotta get justice for them. Mm-hmm. Yes, them. They, they that's not. That's, but they didn't do anything, man. That's true. But what what caused all that? All those people to come to Mexico? Or what is it? The U.S. Just, the U.K. What do you mean? Like they told them to come over? No, here? dude. It's just the way that they were colonized. It's the way that the, their system has been set up by by the by but, the but, power. But I by mean, the, like those caravans, yeah. like all those thousands that just came all at once, like. Pues son tragedias que pasan. Like I hambre, dude. I pinche. But all at once. Yeah, like I'm sure. I don't know. There's probably movimientos happen. Like people, yeah. people are tired of 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 like so much violence and so much this madre and then. And we, you know, and I really feel that it definitely it has to do with the U.S. government. The U.S. government had to have incited a lot of that shit. It's weird, huh? Like, what yeah. the fuck? All these people just start walking, fucking so, exodus from their fucking homeland. They're well, this so, 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 it's needs like people. People need people need to fucking fix well, the situation. That I understand. I understand that part, but but like people with needs travel like. One by one, or independently with their pero, families. But I mean, it's todo un sistema, way. Mm-hmm. It's el pedo. It's like it's an entire system mm-hmm. that that is that has built. That, I mean, I mean, if you if, if you like look at Milton Friedman did that whole shockonomics shit where like they fucking shock the economic system of people through like uh, sometimes through like natural disasters, but they'll create other ones. Like they'll create disasters mm-hmm. so that people end up in like in like really shitty situations where all they're all sure. they're worried about is when am i going to eat and where am i going to sleep next mm-hmm. so i mean you have like you have these like gangs and and you have and and th- which have been like implemented and and pushed by pinche the US mm-hmm. i mean you would leave too in a caravan. It's scary to get on. Have you ever read about La Bestia? Like how that, like, I mean, it's like, you, you don't want to get on that by yourself. Mm-hmm. Se suben los, I mean, es un desmadre. And so, you know, you've got these kids and, and they, they need a better space. Like m- migration should not be illegal. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like birds get to do it. We used to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. And now like, it's a crime. And, uh, and pues ayer se hizo una marcha, este, and we're just trying to advocate calls to action for these children and to deprivatize these 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 uh, detention centers that are mm-hmm. making money off of keeping these children there and treating them like like I don't even like I don't animals shouldn't be treated like that either like they're just mm-hmm. being treated like I don't even know what you would what deserves to be treated like that. No, yeah. nobody, nothing deserves to be treated like that. And and what do you think of the response of most of Mexico against those all those migrants? They didn't want them there either. And, uh, I think Mexico's pretty bad too. Yeah, Mexico is like really bad when it comes. Well, not all of them, but a lot of Mexico. Like I mean, they militarized their border too. Right. And they haven't been very. I don't. It's just it's been a shit show. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think like. Here in the U.S., like they they know better, dude. Like privatizing these fucking detention centers and having kids in cages is fucked up. And 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 um, I just think like they need to hacerse este. Someone needs to fucking be held accountable for this shit. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like these are this is the same system that that. That, I mean, they did this to the Native Americans before, dude. Like, they did this to our people. They've done this. With, this is, like, repeated. Right. This is, like, a repeated pattern to people, minority people. Yeah. What did they do? Chinese people? That's why they built those tunnels? Yeah. They, <laughs> at some point, yeah, they, they, they didn't want... It's always, it's always somebody. Yeah. Blaming it's always the blame. Some, push, putting the finger on someone yeah, else. It's their fault. We don't have jobs. Like, no, dude. It's your fault, right. and it's not. It's it's our fault. Why? Because we're not, we're not standing up. Mm-hmm. We're not educating ourselves. We're not learning the shit that we're scared. Do you think because of the comfort? Pues sí, güey. Pero está bien raro porque how is it comfortable? 
how is that comfortable? Like, Joe, let's just, just turn around and pretend it's not there until it fucking affects you. Yeah. Because if it affects someone else, it's going to eventually, what makes you think you're any different? Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah. no say, sé, pero. Dude, it's a fucked up world, man. COVID, the George Floyd marchas, dude, the whole world's going crazy and it's, it's a strange times. Strange times. I never Important thought. Times. Huh? Important times. Important times. Yeah. Do you think something good will come out of all this? Um, yeah. It has I to, think, huh? I think, well, I think it's already happening. Like, people are talking. People are having conversations. Movimientos are happening. I think mm. that it's so important that people are finally talking mm. about their experience. You know, it was so beautiful. Yeah, I, I, ayer, antier. I know we. I know you have like a time limit, but nah, antier, dude. oh, antier is the. Um, so there's this marcha yesterday for mm-hmm. the children for the justicia for all our here? children here in, in El Paso, and in El Paso, and I think in other parts of the U.S. Mm-hmm. They, they collectively got together and decided on a day. So um, they had asked me to write a song, and so a friend of mine and I wrote a song. Este, she wrote a poem, and mm-hmm. then we put it in the middle. Mm-hmm. And then I wrote a song and I produced it and got together with some friends and we recorded it. Mm-hmm. Y ayer la lanzamos. Se llama Justicia for All Our Children. For Justicia for Our Children. And, and where, where can they find it? Uh, you can find it on YouTube. Oh, okay. And then uh, this girl, so the, the guitarist, his name is Angel Otero. Uh, the, the poet, her name is um, Celia Aguilar. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guitar, uh, the the recording engineer is Marcos Hernandez, and he did the editing. And then uh, Julio Salgado helped us out with a little bit of the of the rap part, of the poem part, because mm-hmm. uh, Marcos couldn't. So and then este, so we were writing, we, uh, we were record uh, editing, Antier, mm-hmm. and it was like, I was like, fuck yeah, dude! Like, I was there sitting with this dude who's like really quiet. He's a pretty quiet dude we have really cool conversations mm-hmm. yes they, and then he said oh i showed this song to a friend of mine he's native american he's a he's a navajo mm-hmm. and then he started talking about how when he was young he never understood why they had to go to a store that was so far away when there was a store right around the corner of their mm-hmm. house and then eventually he realized that they couldn't go to this specific store because they wouldn't serve people like him. Yeah, I see. So they had to go all the way far to a more expensive store so that they could buy from there. And so, you know, and just sitting there and realizing, like, the quality of this conversation, like, dude, mm. we are finally talking about, and it's not, and it's not like a somos dos personas que sabemos que we're, like, knowledgeable in the subject and we've been going to some like group or school or reading certain books like this yeah. is conversation that people are having all the time mm-hmm. and th- i think that that's really important yeah. and also like the other day i went and i had a gig and i was talking to this girl and we started talking about sexual harassment and how like these conversations i'm having with males and females mm-hmm. and i think that this is so important it's mm-hmm. so important to to start talking about these issues this mm-hmm. oppression like the, the, what is it and where does it come from mm-hmm. and how can we fix it but first we got to talk about it y desahogarnos and mm-hmm. sentir que you're not alone mm-hmm. you are not alone dude we are here we're a community mm-hmm. and we're gonna fix something but once we hear everybody then we can collectively come up with with a, a solution, solution. Mm-hmm. yeah Damn. hey pues thank you Damn. for having me well, thanks, Amalia. Yeah. It was a deep conversation. <laughs> had a had a blast. It was nice. It was cool. It was informative. And thanks for uh, sharing a little bit of your life with us. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah. And, oh, if you oh. want to find me. Oh, that's so, yeah. true, dude. If you want to find me, it's... Where um, can they find you? And everywhere, dude. It's the Facebook is Amalia Mondragon Music. And that's... uh. Amalia, A M A L I A, and then it's like Mondragon, M O N Dragon, este music, and then on Instagram it's Amalia underscore Mondragon, Mondragon, este the same on YouTube, Amalia Mondragon music, 
and um, I'm managing my cousins. Uh, they um, sing or what? He's a singer. Yeah, his oh, name okay. is Tereso Contreras. There so you, you can find him on Tereso Contreras Music. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what I've been doing lately. Uh, check it out. Check him out. Check me out. Just see if you if you want. Hit me up if you want to have deep conversations. I'm always down to open to him. I go to sleep really fucking late. So I'm down. There you yeah. go. Thanks, dude. You're fucking cool as fuck, homie. Thanks, dude. So are you. And uh, continue with all your endeavors and your music goals. And hope to uh, see you do whatever it is you want to do in your life. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.